for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. Listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening. Yeah. Fade to Black. Bespoke Radio. For the Masses, I uh, yeah, man. How you doing? Let's do this, man. Today's Wednesday, April 21st, 2021. 112 days into the new year, only 253 days left. We are live from a bunker somewhere in the middle of nowhere, a total undisclosed location. But it is beautiful. I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? All right. Man, oh man, oh man. I just got one thing to say. I've officially crossed the line. I've been I've been warning everybody. I've crossed the line to cranky old dude. I'm just cranky old dude now. Got zero patience. <laughs> I do. I do. It, it, look, you know what the good news is? Everybody, you had a solid eight years of a kindler, gentler, kindler, (laughs) gentler, Jimmy. But that's over. So you had a good dose of it, you know, but, you know, it's uh, it's over. over. I just got zero patience, man. I got zero. My fuse is just like, it's gone. Gone, and I, you know, uh, I, you know what part of it is. You know, it, it's really funny. I, I just wanted to, for so long um, I, in my real life. In my real life, I just, I, I love friends. I love hanging out and and things, and and I love making new friends. And you know, I, I, I don't offend my friends. I keep myself in check because that's who I am. You know, we can all cross that line, but. Um, but and I tried to roll that over into the show. Why to be everybody's friend? You know, I want to make everybody happy. I, I just want everybody to get along. Wait, you know what? Uh, <laughs> it's, just, it's an impossible task. It's impossible. It's just impossible. And and lately, so more on that in just a bit. I'll tell you where I'm coming from. So more on that in just a bit. But yeah, man. I don't know how some people do it. I don't. I, I. I just don't know. I just don't know. All right, tonight, very special guest, the one and only, right here on Fade to Black, Doctor Stephen Greer. Disclosure updates. That's what I'm calling it. He posted a, a live stream. I think it was in the middle of the week last week, uh, uh, or thereabouts, which I watched. I watched the live stream, and uh, and I got a couple of uh, emails from him, and I read through those. And I was like, wow, okay. That, you know, and everything that's going on in the UFO community that's out front that we know about, 
And these two or three things, maybe four, that uh, Dr. Greer was talking about were things that uh, were never uh, raised in the community up to this point. I thought that was very interesting. So immediately uh, we reached out to each other and said, you know, hey, let's, uh, let's get something as soon as we could, which is tonight. So he will be with us at the bottom of the hour. So hang out. It's going to be another Great night, not only on the show, but uh, in speaking with uh, Dr. Greer. Okay, um, now uh, I've got some uh, big news to report, so let's get straight to it. It's about UFO Megacon. And uh, now, yes, um, I'll be there. Uh, Laughlin, Nevada, Aquarius Hotel and Casino, June 6th through the 12th, right there, Laughlin, Nevada. I want everybody to come and hang out with us in person because it's live. One week, presenters, things, action, a real UFO conference right here in the United States in Laughlin, Nevada. So there's that part of it, okay? And I've been announcing it and getting everything. I told everybody about limited ticket sales. You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Well, I think the conference sold out last night. Ah, relax. And then today, the state of Nevada has lifted all restrictions for the events. Holy crap. Now, um, the website there uh, got the emails about this today. Everybody's excited. So I'm making the announcement today. I'll do a deeper dive with this tomorrow and, uh, and what it means. But the website will be updated uh, by this Friday to reflect all of this and to announce this. So I want you to go and visit the website, check in, check often uh, for when the uh, actual updates are there. I have some more verbiage on, on how this is going down. We'll deal with that uh, tomorrow and how the uh, website is updated on Friday. And then, of course, um, uh, we'll uh, uh, take things further on Monday. Okay, but we can probably make this a full seven-day fade or not party, full on. And I think what the, what this involves, the other cool parts about this are now you'll be able to go in and do a deeper dive. You want to do the front half of the conference. You don't have to do all seven days or you can't. You want to do the back half. You want to do some specific things. I think all of that is going to open up too as well. Okay, so this is fantastic news. Okay, there you go. That is my big announcement for the night. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Yeah, at J Church Radio. The Sandbox is hashtag F2B on Twitter. We don't bite. Uh, the, uh, uh, the folks over at YouTube, I was just there right before the show started. <laughs> and... So I just got to check in, man. I got to check in uh, uh, with uh, with YouTube right before the show. So um, I, f I forget why I just even brought that up. I brought that up for a reason. Oh, um, hello to everybody on, on Facebook, on YouTube, over on the Bunker Cam. Of course, the chat rooms are open and the sandbox is right there on Twitter. Happy Born on Earth Day. Is that today? Born on Earth Day? <laughs> I'm going to be talking about planet Earth in just a bit. And you can also email throughout the show, jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. All right. Well, breaking news. 50 years ago, NASA's Apollo 14 completed the third crew mission to the moon. On board Apollo 14 at that time, as it landed in the Pacific Ocean on February 9, 1979, was some uh, 1971 some unusual cargo, about 500 tree seeds. That's right, went to the moon and back. The seeds: loblolly pine, sycamore, sweet gum, redwood, and Douglas fir, had traveled with Stuart Russo, one of the three NASA astronauts on the mission. They were part of an experiment to see how seeds reacted to the space environment. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, Jimmy, where are you going with this? Well, upon their return to Earth, the seeds were germinated by the Forest Service here in the United States. 
They were called moon trees. The resulting seedlings were planted throughout the United States and the world. NASA didn't know where they were. Didn't know who planted them. They did some tracking down, and they found about 60 trees out of the 500, mainly in the U.S., but some in Brazil, some in Japan, and some in Switzerland. Well, Steve Miller, vice president of the Royal Astronomical Society and a professor at the University College of London, wants to know what happened to the rest of them, as does the U.K. Space Agency. I didn't know they had one, but they do. So now the search is on for moon trees. Do you have any in your yard? Over in the UK, do you know of any moon trees? Contact Steve Miller. I had no idea this ever went on, and it's really cool. All right, well, you know what's going on. I've been watching all the posts in social media, all the snow action. That's right, and I'm looking at the date. It is indeed April 21st. We have, next month is May. We're, we're out of spring. We're out of spring. We're into May. We're summertime. And it, even if the calendar right here, right here on my computer, it says 4-21-2021. Right there, man. That's a lot of 20s and 21s, right? But calendar says spring. A wintry storm will be bringing a late round of snow, record low temperatures, and severe storms throughout the Northeast today and tonight. In a sign that old man winter isn't loosening his freezing grip on millions of people just yet. Not yet. Freeze warnings are currently in effect for over 70 million people from the plains through the northeast United States. And over 80 record low temperatures are expected by tomorrow. And that is nuts. Well, check this out. Breaking news. The Great Isaiah Scroll. A famous Dead Sea Scroll manuscript was written by not just one, but two scribes, according to a new study that used artificial intelligence. That's right, AI and statistics to detect subtle differences in handwriting on the ancient document. Now, the two scribes wrote in such a similar manner that the differences between the two aren't visible to the naked eye. A detail that suggests the scribes might have had similar training, right? Went to the same school, or maybe they hung out at the same bar. We don't know. But all of this is in the study. The researchers' methods detected subtle and numerous differences in the handwriting that cannot be seen, and the discovery that the scribes uh, collaborated on the Great Isaiah Scroll reveals that ancient scribes worked in teams it wasn't just one dude it's breaking news more on this as it develops let's get this show cracking happy birthday to today james mcavoy today is 42 he's great but he was really great in his dark materials comedian funny man great actor funny actor rob riggle today is 51 the hangover right iggy pop Today is 74, and I went, love Iggy Pop, I went back, and one of, you know, out of all of his stuff, the one album for me, and the one song that I just loved, featured Steve Jones of the Sex Pistols on guitar, is a song called Cold Metal, and and the video, man, it's such an 80s video, man, it's like Iggy Pop in his 80s freshness and the production it's like big hair but it's like poison it's like a poison video featuring Iggy Pop but I love that song I love that song and I love what uh, Steve Jones did on that entire record Iggy Pop today is 74 go check out Cold Metal you've never seen Iggy Pop like this The Cures Robert Smith today is 72 on this day in history 2016 Prince is found dead in his Paisley Park studio right there in Minnesota. The cause of death was accidental overdose of fentanyl. He was 57 years old. When he died, I, I barely even knew what fentanyl was. I don't think any of us did. Times have changed. A fader fact. Okay, here we go. That's a good one. 
Jim Thompson. You got to look this up, too. This is, imagine, not quite Bill Gates, but like that. Not quite Elon Musk, but at that level. I mean, at that level. Okay? Almost. Almost. And that's Jim Thompson. Jim Thompson was a businessman who turned Thai silk into a global commodity. He moved to Thailand and started one of the most successful business ventures in the history of the world, becoming rich beyond measure, socialite, and did it all by 1967. That was the year that he left for a biking trip in Malaysia and never returned. Gone. And that is your fader. Imagine Bill Gates gets on a bike. I'll be right back (laughs) and disappears. Elon Musk gets on a bike. Gone. Think about that. That's Jim Thompson, 1967. Amazing story. That is your fader fact. And that is River Moon Coffee. Fade to black blend. I like my coffee dark. I do. I do like my coffee dark. Burnt. I like burnt coffee. I like burnt coffee. I like that smoky thing. And that's what you get with Fade to Black Blend. That's it. Our Game Changer Blend, it's a little softer. Still dark. A little softer. A little smoother. But, man, Fade to Black Blend. Mm. Earth Day. Happy. What? What? What, what, I, I, David, you're confusing me with this man. <laughs> I have no idea. It's funny though. Yeah, just, uh, just check out hashtag F to be the sandbox on Twitter. You can see what I'm talking about tonight. Very special guest. Stephen Greer is with us. We're calling this evening disclosure updates because he's got a few things that uh, need to be talked about tonight. And, uh, all of them of course, relate to disclosure. And uh, we'll be doing all of that and having another conversation. So he'll be with us in a few short minutes. Stay right there. And uh, I was talking earlier about me being, I'm, I'm cranky. I'm cranky. I'm just like the old dude. I'm serious. Like, get off my lawn. That's where I am. And and some things, you know, I've, I've always been able to let go of. Right now, I'm not. I'm not there. I'm not there. I'm not there. So what am I talking about? Well, let me set you up. Because, you know, first, man, you know, the universe is big. (laughs) What? Our Milky Way is big. And I comment on this all the time. I hope that by now it's starting to sink in with all of you. The Milky Way stretches over 150,000 light years edge to edge. Not the universe. It sounds like I'm talking about the universe. I'm not. I'm talking about the Milky Way. 150,000 light years from edge to edge. Now chew on that for a second. Our closest star neighbor, as we know, is Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri, it's just 4.5 light years away, all right? It's so close to us that if it was observed from, say, an ET civilization 10,000 light years away, one would think that we had a binary star system. Our sun and Proxima would practically be on top of each other from that distance. Seriously, that's what they would see. But Proxima is very, very far away. How far? Well, let me tell you. If you were standing in downtown Dallas, Texas, and dropped a single grain of salt on the street, all right, and then tossed another single grain of salt on a sidewalk in Oklahoma City, 
you would have some idea about how far away Proxima Centauri is from planet Earth. It's like that. That gives you some sense of the size of our Milky Way. And that's our closest neighbor. It's ginormous. The way that science looks at our galaxy and the totality of the universe has changed greatly over the last 10 or 20 years. And we have learned a lot. This knowledge has trickled down to us, the masses, and it's out there for all of you to research. But to be totally honest here, the numbers, theories, and facts change almost daily. You have to stay on top of things, and I do. So I'm here for you. People, people have been reporting about seeing strange things in our skies for what seems like thousands of years. But up until very recently, nobody knew where they were coming from. And most of this is based on just one fact. One. Until 25 years ago, we thought that the only planets anywhere were right here in our own solar system. That's a fact. Today, the facts are daunting. The numbers are so big that we barely understand the significance of it all. That little grain of salt in Oklahoma City is repeated over 500 billion times, each with at least one planet. Right here in our own Milky Way. Not the universe, right here in our own Milky Way. How many of those worlds have water, are rocky, have oxygen and nitrogen, right? Are in the Goldilocks zone. The number is north of 20 billion. How many have life? Probably all of them, <laughs> right? Microbial life, life that, that, is self regenerate you know, they, they, all of them. Intelligent life? Well, who knows? But the number is huge. Huge. How many have developed beyond us? Technically, I mean, right? Well, just imagine where we will be in another thousand years right here on earth. Where are we going to be in a thousand years? It's like, holy crap, right? Think about how far we've come in the last hundred years. We've only had real science for 300 years. The universe is 13.8 billion years old. We are just talking about that much time. It's like, holy crap, right? Well, how many civilizations out there right now are at least that thousand years in front of us? One, a million, right? <laughs> a billion? Now, with what I have seen, with what I know, Somebody, something is visiting this planet. They know we are here, right? They've known for quite some time. But with all of the recent confirmed data about our Milky Way, my guess is that there are tens of thousands, if not millions, of intelligent civilizations right now that are keeping track of us. Up close or at a distance, doesn't matter. This, this is the conversation we need to be having today. That's the conversation. These are the facts. What I have seen is a fact. It's not there for conjecture. It's not here for interpolation. What did he see? Is he telling the truth? What I have seen is a fact. So today, and maybe it's my cranky old man attitude, but today, 
when I see the things that are presented about UFOs in the media, both social and mass, that are just outright blown up, made up, crazy talk, it upsets me. I don't have patience for it anymore. We need to be talking about the facts and the reality. Today, we know enough about what is out there, about the planets, the stars, and the galaxies. We don't need a carnival atmosphere with flying pyramids evading our beautiful blue gem. We don't need it. The facts are fascinating enough. We need to stay right there. Now, I've thought about this a lot. I mean, should I just jump on the Corbell bandwagon, right? Should I just do it and yell, Holy crap, man, flying pyramids. Check out this video. This leaked video is real, right? Our Navy is being harassed by ET right now. The Senate Intelligence Committee is going to be briefed on alien ships swarming over the USS Russell. Man, right? Should I be that guy? Should I be out there just waving that flag saying the struggle is real, man, but now it's over. Disclosure has arrived. Flying pyramids west of San Diego. No. I can't and won't do it. Although I know that E.T. is here, and I know this, has been and will be, but I just can't do it. I don't give a crap about anyone who wants to be critical of me for not participating in this charade. Look, right now, as I speak to you, there are probably a million civilizations talking about us, earthlings, right now. This has to be true. The numbers support this. The numbers do not support flying pyramids with flashing FAA aircraft lights west of San Diego. Seriously. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, the cranky old dude. This is Fade to Black, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet. Tonight's guest, Dr. Stephen Greer. I'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. Cold Church, daughter of you know who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the fader knots. If the game is rigged, change the game. It's a bolder cup with some bite. Game Changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder, but it's still dark. With wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich, balanced, full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day as an after-dinner coffee or anywhere in between. Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Rivermooncoffee.com. This is the only way forward. This is Made to Black. Make contact. KGRARadio.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can get our podcast for just $2 per month. All you have to do is click on the podcast banner 
over at jimmychurchradio.com. Hi, folks. It's trembling times, and fear is pushing emotions, which in turn pushes health the wrong direction. Do you ever get an ache because life is uneasy? Try Life Change Tea at getthetea.com. Life Change Tea works on your digestive tract, helping to move food through quicker and comfortably so your health is spot on. Life Change Tea may not help with world issues, but it will help with your digestive issues. A glass a day helps keep the intruders away. So, change your life today. Log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. If your health game is off, get on by ordering Life Change Tea. Getthetea.com. And while you're on our site, look around at the great non-GMO organic supplements. And if you're a sales shopper, go to our specials page and see what's for you. I've been drinking the tea for 12 years, and I'm sure glad for its health benefits. Again, that's getthetea.com. Getthetea.com. The tea that makes you go. Fade or not, when you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Matthew. You're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Dr. Stephen Greer is with us. I'm calling this disclosure updates tonight, but he's got uh, a few things that uh, he brought up uh, to our community last week. We're going to cover all of those and much more. Tomorrow night is Fader Night, open lines all night long, and I've got a drive-by uh, tomorrow night from uh, Richard Dolan, so he's going to come hang out with us for a little bit, then we'll go straight to open lines. Tonight, Dr. Stephen Greer, we're going to be discussing the recent possible space arms treaty. Uh, what may be expected with the new UAPTF report, the task force report due to the U.S. Senate this June, and of course his upcoming new film project, and uh, he's also got a live webinar coming up, and I will post all of that in uh, social media uh, shortly, and we'll be discussing that too as well. Uh, Dr. Greer is the founder of the Disclosure Project, the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, otherwise known as CSETI. The Orion Project and Serious Technology Advanced Research, LLC. Dr. Greer is also the author of four books and multiple DVDs on the UFO ET subject, including the documentary Sirius, and has appeared on CBS, BBC, the Discovery Channel, History Channel, Ancient Aliens, and the movie Thrive. His last two films, Unacknowledged and Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, are two of the most watched documentaries of the last four years. You can reach out via the website, uh, ce5film.com. And uh, we've got another website that I'm going to post up here in just a minute. And you can go and uh, get uh, registered and all the information for his upcoming live webinar. I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black, Dr. Stephen Greer. Dr. Greer, how are you tonight, man? How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I, you know what? Every time you're on... I'm I'm that much better. But you know, <laughs> Dr. Greer, I wanted to ask you, I want to start off here. Um, I am doing my best. You've got a couple of years on me, not much. You look great. 
But I'm starting to find out in my old age, I'm about to turn 58, that I'm turning into the cranky old dude of ufology, right? Where I just don't, have, I just don't have patience anymore, and I'm doing everything I can uh, to keep from getting angry. You know, like get off my lawn. You've been at this now for 30 years. How have you kept your feet on the ground and kept yourself from turning into the cranky old dude like I'm about to do? Well, you know, of course, the, the center project that, that we've done for 30 years is a Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind and the CE5 Contact uh, initiative. There's an app by that name, CE5 Contact, is really centered in consciousness, higher states of consciousness, a sort of a deep sense of spirituality and where we are in the cosmos and, uh, and those um, uh, areas of investigation and exploration. And that's all very, very positive. So now a lot of people, of course, know that I founded the disclosure movement and did all that stuff. But the core and the heart of what we've been working on is actually incredibly beautiful. And it's the harmony of heart and mind coming together. And that's always renewing and uh, revigorating. But d how do you handle the frustration? You know, uh, I remember well, that, yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> meditation and, and, and work out, you know, like, you know, last night I was uh, leg pressing 900 pounds and, you know, I, I move a lot of, of iron around just to, just to, uh, blow off steam. It's better than breaking plates. Right. 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 I guess I got to get on the treadmill. Um, I, I remember, and that'll never happen. I, I, I can't keep a martini glass you know, <laughs> on, the, on the treadmill. But um, I remember you and I talking about this last year uh, privately about some of the excitement that was uh, going on in the middle of the summer last year. And but coupled with that, the frustration of some of the disinformation around some of the excitement. And it, it, it you know, it's so easy to get excited. But at the same time, you just get frustrated with the confliction and the debunkers and the skeptics and 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 the, the trolling and social media, where sometimes you just want to throw your hands up in the air, but you can't do that. You've got to keep your foot on the gas, don't you? Yeah, I stay focused on the purpose, which is, you know, there are three big uh, things that we focus on in, in, in my project, uh, peaceful contact as ambassadors from humanity to these civilizations, all of them without prejudice, uh, disclosure and getting the truth out to the public and also educating the public that we have wonderful solutions in technology and energy and propulsion systems that if they could be brought out or declassified would give us a sustainable civilization without poverty or pollution. So those are the things I focus on and all the other noise and the cacophony and the whatever you know, that's fine. I've just learned to accept that uh, and the endless defamations and accusations. I mean, it, none of that matters to me at this point. It never did, frankly, because, you know, I, I keep my compass very clear where we're headed. Um, now, it is frustrating that, for example, in the mainstream media, which, of course, uh, you know, literally on the payroll of the intelligence community, the, the, the information coming out, all of it has had attached to it this scary narrative of being a national security threat or the UAPs or whatever the faddish word they're going to call it this year is, um, are uh, somehow menacing our destroyers and our warships. Now, what's interesting about that, we predicted this in the 90s. And people who go back and read in the 1990s, a paper I wrote, when disclosure serves secrecy, it literally outlines everything happening in the last couple of years with this. And we knew this. And the reason it wasn't like I was on the psychic hotline, although our group does do remote viewing into the future and what have you, it was because I had been read into or briefed on, the, on what this agenda is. Uh, and this was, you know, around the time that I also met uh, Carol Rosen, who was the, the spokesperson for Werner von Braun, mm -hmm. who literally invented the rock and trade off Hitler. And not only had she been warned of this by... Uh, Werner von Braun in 1974, when she was in the 70s, when she was one of the few women executives in the aerospace industry, she saw a document outlining all the wars from the 70s until now, culminating in the hoaxing false flag 
of an alien threat and uh, trying to unite the world uh, militaristically in, in sort of a totalitarian way against the aliens. She saw that document. By the way, General Wesley Clark saw part of it and actually spoke of it on Democracy Now! People can fact check this. So this is, you know, this is something that has been baked into our paradigm and understanding for a very long time. So when it begins to happen, like it started happening with uh, professional counterintelligence, disinformation agents like Elizondo and others, this was totally expected, predicted, and known it was going to happen. There was nothing surprising about it. And therefore, there was really no great frustration about it. It was what we were, we, we were actually saying was the long-term, you know, 70, 75-year defense strategy plan that was concocted in the 70s, 60s, and uh, I'm sorry, 60s and even 50s. So that, that's kind of, it's a contextual. If people have the context and understand that this has always been part and parcel of the secrecy is that at first it would come out through interested parties and sort of fringe communities. Then it would come out through organizations that were would front and get it into the mainstream media. Now, this year, it's going to come out directly from the Pentagon and the Director of National Intelligence, and there is a consistent thread through it. And that is the best disinformation, false information, has some really true information in it. And it creates this poison pill that everyone's going to swallow and believe and, and take the bait. And, and it's extremely effective. You know, a, a good analogy is after 9-11, when Dick Cheney was, you know, had Colin Powell, the, the, the Secretary of State, and he had been chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, go, go up to the United Nations and talk about all the weapons of mass destruction that Saddam Hussein had, when in reality, everyone knew he didn't have any at all. And, and, uh, but he was set up. And his chief of staff, Colin Powell's chief of staff, has now admitted that on camera. And so that's how we got into the Iraq war. So this is one of the problems is the media, the mainstream media now, of course, the big Internet giants are never writ large going to tell the American public this fact and this truth. And that's why you and I and other people in the alternative world and in social media have to speak the truth and continue to speak it. Still, uh, Colin Powell's one regret, you know, he's mentioned it so many times. I wish I could take that that presentation back from the United Nations. Yep. It, now, I wanted to yep. ask you, um, OK, so last week I watched your your uh, impromptu, urgent live stream and and I thought, OK, what's going on here? OK, so I'm, I'm tuned in. And you said uh, some things at the front of it about uh, Carol Rosen. And this space treaty, um, now I don't want to, I, I, because of, um, I didn't gather all of the information and, and, and you were a little bit limited on the details of that. What can you tell us? What was, who, uh, who signed it? Who retracted, right? How far did it get off the ground? Where is it now? Can you give us those details? Yeah, so there are 122 countries, or maybe a couple more now, who have agreed in principle to sign a treaty to keep weapons out of space. The big holdouts have been the United States, United Kingdom, a couple of our allies. Now, uh, a few weeks ago, the Biden administration indicated that they would want to go, that they agree to that in principle. But since then, the Council on Foreign Relations and others have inserted themselves and are now trying to unwind that or walk that statement back. So uh, the reason this is so important is because, uh, and, and we are now getting some Russian people, and on, on, on Sunday, this coming Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do uh, the 20 year anniversary of the disclosure project. It's 20 years uh, this spring. And so we're doing an event that will be a live webinar, and we're going to have the the one the man who's a cosmonaut who trains the other astronauts and cosmonauts in Russia, and some video that's been done by uh, Russian generals uh, talking specifically about the fact that the UFOs are real, these are extraterrestrial civilizations, that they are not hostile, and that we share space with them, and it is extremely dangerous to weaponize space, and so we have to keep space free of these uh, offensive weapons uh, or any weapons of any kind at all. 
So now that is running quite counter to the Space Force and Space Command, which is kind of part of that, and uh, the U.S. endeavor, uh, which has already put very destructive weapons on satellites. So we were, this is a complex issue. What I have been saying to various world leaders for a very long time is that you cannot make the conventional geopolitical argument, oh, you know, let's you know, keep weapons out of space because of superpower com- conflict um, and uh, the competition between Russia, China, the United States, whatever. It has to have the extraterrestrial component put in. Otherwise, it's just the default position is great power, superpower um, competition. And anyone who's ahead in that game, like the United States, isn't going to put the pause button on. So it has to get elevated to something that is more what the heart of the matter is. Now, the reason that hasn't happened is a little bit frustrating, and that is because these other countries are also intimidated by this transnational uh, clandestine organization, frankly, that has been keeping this secret for many decades and which has enormous geopolitical and economic power. So I think that what we're trying to do is say, look, the time for playing footsie under the table on this is over. People are going to have to step forward and do this properly. Luckily, we are getting some really great progress in in various countries on that. Um, And people are going to see on Sunday uh, when we do this five hour webinar with people uh, from all, you know, from Russia, the cosmonauts, a a whole bunch of new evidence and cases that are going to be presented, including quite astonishingly. A photograph. We need help in helping people uh, run this to ground. Um, that came out of a, a woman who had worked at the, on the atomic bomb and was at Roswell when the crash happened. Um, that is from the 1920s of uh, uh, some kind of humanoid creature being dissected on a slab. We're going to show that. We have a high res file of this very old. We're talking 80 year old, 90 uh, year old, uh, actually 100 year old. Uh, photograph because it could be as early as 1921 or 22 that it was taken. Um, we actually have uh, seen and had the original five by seven photograph analyzed. The paper it was printed on was from pre 1950s. Um, we've had an analyze and the, the the medical equipment and all the styles have been confirmed by the top medical archivists in the world to be from the 20s and the top uh, clothing experts at the Museum of of Modern Art in uh, New York as confirmed from the 20s. So we have absolutely the provenance of this photograph and the date of it, but we, no one else in the world has seen it. Now, I, you know, frankly, when I was putting materials together for the president and vice president, this thing sat on the top of it, a big glossy of it and saying this, we now know goes back to the 1920s. Now, um, help me understand really quick, and uh, I want to get this in before uh, the top of the hour. Ex- uh, without uh, th- this is going to be revealed this Sunday, the twenty fifth, right? Um, yes. Th- the what? What is the context of the photograph? A- a- again, what does it show? Okay, so the, what it shows is this unusual humanoid creature being right. on a dissection table. Right, being having organs taken out of its abdomen cavity, with a group of what looks like military uh, people in suits, government people in suits, and doctors standing around the, the the this table during the dissection, and we have no idea how that event happened. We don't know where this came from. Now I'm going to tell people what I think happened and how this woman that gave it to us, right. acquired it. Her, her grandmother was working on the atomic bomb project and then was moved over to the Walker Field where the only atomic bomb squadron was after World War II. And so uh, we think, because I mean, she was like a seamstress that built the cover for the atomic bomb, literally the atomic bomb we dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And she was read into a level where she could be near that stuff. But she was not a scientist, but she knew all the other worker bees. And what I think happened is that when that crash happened, 
a courier brought in some old archives from previous events, which I've heard about from the late 1800s, early 1900s. Mm -hmm. And someone took a photo of the photo. We know what we have is a photograph of an old photograph. Um, Now, the context of the history of that event, where did this being, this humanoid being come from? How did they acquire it? Uh, Was it a crash event? et cetera, and so on, we don't know anything. And not, neither does the, the family that has this. They were going through their grandmother's belongings. She lived to be 90-some mm-hmm. years old mm-hmm. and opened a book, and this thing fell out on mm-hmm. the floor when they were just going through her belongings in the attic. And they went, oh, what the hell is this? Right. So obviously, being who I am, they contacted me, and we've run it to ground as far as we can. But we need people who maybe who have been in, quote, the vault, or have seen the really old archives that we know the government has that are still top secret that deal with extraterrestrial vehicles and extraterrestrial beings to take a look at this and see if they can shed any light on it. And that's one of the big reasons why I'm releasing it. We need help uh, seeing if anyone has been inside military operations uh, where they have seen this in an archive. Now, Obviously, nobody living in that photograph exists. I mean, they'd have to be 150 years old Mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. 120 because it was 100 years ago. But it's a very interesting piece of evidence, and it's explosive in the sense that if it is what we think it is, we know it's not a hoax, we know it's not a fraud, et cetera. It means that there are top-secret archives on this issue up to and including Roswell-type events Mm -hmm. 20, 25 years before Roswell. And that is a very significant breakthrough. Does it feel uh, through uh, what have you uh, been told about, you know, some of the equipment that is seen in the photograph? Does it feel like it was taken in the United States? Oh, it's definitely United States, 100 uh, percent. We absolutely know it's U.S. We absolutely know it's medical equipment at a dissection. There were suits and people around that clearly look like government officials. There were medical personnel all around the table, and uh, there were, you know, pans and other stuff. Now, it's it's not the greatest quality, and obviously it's been sitting around yellowed and old for a very long time. Mm -hmm. But we have a a very professional high-res version of it that we're going to show on Sunday and uh, see if we can get people to help us. And, of course, we have a new uh, emergency documentary we're working on. It's very difficult to do this, but in the next you know, six to eight weeks, we're going to try to get the final cut on an educational film, which will not be distributed through the film industry. It'll be dumped onto the internet and everyone can get a free copy of it and put it on every YouTube site and every other blockchain site in the world. Because we need a billion to 2 billion people to see this documentary because we're going to expose, we're not only going to include this evidence, but we're going to, we're going to put a material in there that will prove that we have man-made UFOs that have been involved in clandestine operations since the 50s and 60s that have been hoaxing alien events. The name of this documentary is called The Cosmic Hoax, an expose. So we're going to drill down on that, down to and including diagrams and models of the ones that have been built from Lockheed and Northrop and others going way back. And we're going to connect these dots for people and explain how they have been used in clandestine operations to deceive first the UFO interested community and now the whole mainstream media and general public. And this is very important because the only way we can prevent, I hate to say this, World War III uh, from being hoaxed and, and having the world dragged into it is to expose the way that they can simulate alien events that are completely false. The uh, the website for everybody to go to, it's uh, Stephen's website, of course, Dr. Greer's website, SeriousDisclosure.com. And uh, the webinar and uh, live stream is this Sunday, April 25th. Everybody knows what I am going to be doing this Sunday. I've got to see this photograph. I've got to see this image. Uh, this sounds incredible. And to have a potential date of around 1920... That certainly changes the game. Uh, that is oh, yes. that is very interesting and, and very very compelling. Um, and this, well, I, you know, I have people. I have people on my team, Jimmy, that have been in the archives and have seen uh, classified top secret material on this subject going back 
to the late 1800s and early 1900s. So we know there's a much bigger story than the conventional wisdom of everything from the, the World War II onward, Foo Fighters onward, um, and that those are in classified files, and they're still in unacknowledged special access projects and top secret. Now, you uh, mentioned, I, w- I want to get this in, we have 60 seconds before the break, uh, that uh, this new documentary is on a fast track. Do you need help from the community uh, to get this film produced? Yes, it's like everything we've done. We have no financial partners who own anything. It's owned by the people, and it's it's all crowdfunded. So at ce5film.com, people can contribute um, to, to this. I mean, it's a very fast um, turnaround on this. My production team are enormously stressed. It usually takes one or two years to do something like this, and we're going to do it in less than two months. But um, And the reason we are is that we know that what's coming uh, with this director of national intelligence report that's due in, in June mm-hmm. to the Congress is going to be chock full of uh, false narratives and cases. For example, the thing that the Pentagon, you know, confirmed last week of this uh, Navy ship being, quote, harassed by these triangles. Well, those triangles are made by Northrop Grumman. My uncle worked for Northrop Grumman. These are anti grabs of ours. So, What's happening is that there are events that have occurred that are from human clandestine operations that are going to be foisted onto the public as uh, unknowns. Well, they're not unknown. We know exactly what they are. And boy, after the break, I'm going to tell you a story about a member of this secret Majestic 12 team's son and grandson who has done a three-hour interview with me a few days ago, and we're going to have clips of that on Sunday that's going to blow your socks off. Let's take our break right here. Our guest tonight, Dr. Stephen Greer. We're going to continue this conversation when we come back after this short break. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. We've got a lot to squeeze in here tonight. The website is seriousdisclosure.com. The live webinar is this Sunday, April 25th. You heard... From Dr. Greer himself, he's got a photograph, apparently from the 1920s, that is going to be shown high res uh, to everybody live on Sunday. I'll be right back. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station. Salt Lake City, Utah. Van Buren, Arkansas. This is Billy Carson with ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Forbidden Knowledge TV has just reached its one-year anniversary. That's right. One year, and as a show of appreciation, we are giving all new subscribers a free 30-day trial of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. That's 30 days to binge watch thousands of movies, documentaries, conferences, workshops, lectures, yoga classes, meditation courses, and so much more. So log on to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv from your computer or mobile device or get the Forbidden Knowledge TV app on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, iTunes, or Google Play today and use coupon code 30 days free. That's coupon code 30 days free on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv today. Listen, I know and you know that you've always wanted your first crystal skull. Or maybe you're a collector just like me, but you just don't know where to go to find the real thing. Then I met Carolyn Ford over at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Carolyn is the guardian of Einstein, one of the most respected ancient crystal skulls in the world. All of her unique skulls have been imprinted sitting with Einstein in his sacred lodge and are carved from the finest gemstone and materials. Imprinting is the process of receiving the ancient wisdom from the master skull or master computer. Einstein, the ancient crystal skull. To see Carolyn's current collection of crystal skulls, just visit her store at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com or click on the banner over on our site. Don't forget to use the promo code JIMMY at checkout to receive 10% off of your order today. That's promo code JIMMY. 
finding your first or next crystal skull is easy. Just visit EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Hello, I'm Kakili and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on jimmychurchradio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black, on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. Well, the <laughs> just... <laughs> We're also the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official Fade or Not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the Lucky Pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black, across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. <laughs> Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Dr. Stephen Greer. We've got a lot to cover. Very short time to get it all in. And uh, I want to continue where we left off, uh, Dr. Greer, right before the break. And I want to sure. I, I want to jump into uh, the UAP task force report and what is to be expected. And, and probably uh, some broken hearts are going to be uh, happening in the UFO community. But you told us about a three-hour interview that you just completed. Uh, what happened? Who was it? Well, if uh, people recall, the senior Republican U.S. Senator from uh, Virginia, where I live, uh, for many, many years, and who was also Secretary of the Navy, was uh, uh, Senator John Warner. Um, now, Senator John Warner um, was involved in the committee uh, the clandestine organization on this issue, sort of a low mid-level person in the Senate. Um, he, of course, worked with uh, uh, George H.W. Bush uh, closely. Uh, he had campaigned for Richard Nixon, uh, and uh, he's now in his 90s. Now, his son, um, who's closer to my and your age, Jimmy, um, has come forward to talk about what he, he has found out but more importantly, what his grandfather dealt with. Now, John Warner IV, who is the man we interviewed, his grandfather, his mother's father, was Paul Mellon of the Mellon, Carnegie, you know, all that, the Mellon uh, family. And it was a, one of the few billionaires in the world at the end of World War II, and who was also, um, of course, um, a very big supporter of Adolf Hitler, um, during uh, the run-up to the war, uh, and also along with Prescott Bush and Watson of IBM and Henry Ford, these were all known fascist supporters. But, of course, once war was declared, they had to back down. But at the end of the war, uh, he explains that Paul Mellon, his grandfather, told him this directly. 
that he and Alan Dulles and G- General Patton went over to Germany and retrieved a disc. And it wasn't a jet ram rocket disc. He specifically asked his grandfather. It was one of these anti-gravity discs and brought it back to the United States. And that that became a very important part of the post of World War II, so-called Operation Paperclip, where we brought in a lot of the German scientists, rocket scientists, engineers in Operation Paperclip and brought them into the United States. But he confirmed this and that this became a very important point of research and that they had not perfected it, but it was operational. In other words, it wasn't stable, but it would work. And so he talks about that and a lot of other explosive information. The other interesting thing is that, of course, you noticed the name Mellon, Chris Mellon, who's been part of TTSA and worked a lot with uh, Elizondo, is his cousin. And he is furious. And he says in the camera, flat out, he says, I am furious. I am a Mellon. He is a Mellon. Uh, he's more distant, actually. Chris Mellon's more distant, whereas this gentleman, John Warner IV, is the grandson of the Paul Mellon. Mm-hmm. And he said, I am furious that a Mellon is flat out lying to the American people. I am quoting. This interview is astounding because it's a first family of the CIA founding. It's a first family of the post-World War II national security state. And this gentleman is coming forward discussing this. So this is a, a very interesting development. And... Um, I think a very, very important interview. The, uh, the leaks that have been happening, uh, over, uh, the last week and the mass media has uh, picked up on this and I equate it to, it's almost a carnival atmosphere here with, uh, with these claims about, uh, what, uh, the Navy has videoed and, uh, part of it uh, for me, Dr. Greer, uh, the frustration that I was alluding to earlier is that the Navy has confirmed uh, they shot a video of UFOs. And that is clearly not what the the Pentagon has stated. And when you watch this video, there's aircraft, flashing aircraft lights. Right. So unless ET is FAA compliant these days, I'm pretty sure that's terrestrial in in the videos, but the media runs with it. The UFO community uh, is hopeful and they've got emotions involved and they start to believe. And once it's out there, it now becomes fact, right? You can't, you can't retract it. You can't pull it back. How frustrating is that? And what do you think is really in these videos? Well, I know what it is. I mean, and it is what I said at the beginning of the show. This is not; these are not leaks. This is a controlled release. So, in Washington, I have a home in Washington. I meet with people all the time who are involved in these classified covert operations. And you you move things through the system. You deliberately leak them to people who will get it out through the media or the tabloids or what have you, Fox News, whatever it is. And then you put the spin on it. So these aren't leaks. These are deliberate controlled uh, uh, releases, which are building up to, and and, and if you look at them, they all have headlines like harassing our Navy's historians. Well, now, honestly, in in terms of now, in, in, in defense of our pilots and our Navy captains and all these people, if you're running a Navy ship running off diesel, or a jet engine jet fighter, you are not read into the Lockheed Skunk Works and Northrop anti-gravity devices. So if you see one of those things and they come over and, quote, menace your ship, it is natural for them to say, oh, this can't be ours. It must be Chinese or alien or something. Now, that's part of the deception. And that's what's so dangerous because the, 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 the people who are involved in these covert programs are happy for people to talk about UFOs, UAPs, extraterrestrials, what they do not. The big secret, listen to what I'm of every single person listen. The big secret is that they do not want the public to know that these objects many times are our own clandestine aircraft and that those are used 
and deceptive indications and warnings, which is the a, a Pentagon ling- lingo for a false flag. And so our uh, people that look, I, I met with a, a three star general who was the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, and he was not read into the existence of these objects at all. So he's there at the top of the food chain for intelligence for the Pentagon. The entire military of the United States had no knowledge of these things until I went in with a big briefing basket full of of evidence. And this is a real problem because it means that people who are like Marco, Senator Rubio, members of the Congress, the president, members of the Pentagon, not all of them, some of them are read in, but many of them aren't. And they can be caught flat footed and tricked. And so the reason this emergency documentary is coming out and it's quite frankly, a huge heavy lift to do it. We need a lot of help. Um, and it's also why we're not going to a distribution channel. We're going to release it. Everyone can get a copy. Anyone who knows, like I'm going to ask Demi Lovato, who has 100 million Instagram followers, please put this on all your sites. Because we need to get a billion, maybe two billion people to see this thing. And if enough people see it and understand it, it will take the wind out of the sails of this false flag, which is on a fast track coming this summer. So that's why we're doing this. It's, it, we're, we're, I'm very serious when I say this is trying to avert World War III. The, uh, there was a post, um, and I'm not uh, uh, trying to suggest anything here. I just find the timing suspect. Um, mm-hmm. You had Lou Elizondo on Twitter uh, posting a picture of himself at an airport in Washington, D.C. last week. And he says, I'm going back home. I'm out here working, you know, uh, know, UAP task force, whatever. And then the leaks happen and, and, and it's all the same circle of, of people and names and, 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 and who it got leaked to and how, you know, uh, leak in, in air quotes, by the way, Dr. Greer. Um, But uh, I, I find all of that strange um and and yet nobody wants to like bring this up and say hey wait a minute here this is how it went down last time and and now it's wash rinse repeat do you feel the sure. same thing or am i just way off base no no this is what's happening it's what you know it's an acculturation a desensitization project that did happen with disinformation through the ufo subculture you know, when they started using these man-made craft with little creatures that they were making or short people to hoax alien abductions and mutilations. Look, I know the guys who were on those abduction teams and the mutilation teams. And, of course, you know, the public lapped it up like a, a saucer of milk and a kitten. But th- the fact is now this is a different game. This is moving this in through the mainstream media almost on a weekly basis with comments coming out of the ranking member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, like Senator Marco Rubio, and I might add, uh, President Trump's former Director of National Intelligence, Radcliffe, who's, who both have said, these cannot be ours. These, these objects, these UAPs that are over our military bases can't be ours. The problem is that's simply a lie. And one of the things that uh, Senator John Warner's son says emphatically is that that is a damn lie. There's no mystery here. There are extraterrestrial vehicles, and there are uh, the man-made ones. And, of course, you know, I mentioned to him, and I think he, he didn't realize this, I have a letter, uh, a series of letters, so an individual who wrote to Ben Rich, the head of the Lockheed Skunk Works, uh, saying, you know, look, are these uh, uh, extraterrestrial or uh, the uh, man-made, our anti-gravs, or both? And Ben Rich, in his own handwriting on the letterhead for Lockheed, signed, in 1986, says they're both, and I, I, they are. So this is uh, this is an open secret, and yet the mainstream media, unfortunately, most of the UFO community, the uh, these members of Congress are all saying the same thing. These can't possibly be. Well, there are extraterrestrial vehicles, and there are also the man-made ones. The reason people don't want to make that distinction and admit there are both is that people have attachments to their paradigm. Everything's got to be extraterrestrial or none of it is. In reality, it's both. And until we kind of accept that, but the danger of of it being repeated like a mantra over and over again by the media and these officials and the government, 
uh, of saying, oh, gee, you know, and you notice that like the Lockheed um, uh, Skunk Works guy that was with TTSA was saying, oh, we need to have some funding so we can figure out what these are and how they operate. Yeah, that was done in the 40s and 50s, dude. Mm. So this is just completely false and deceptive. And that's why a Senator Warner's son wanted to come forward and say, look, I'm a Mellon. My grandfather was Paul Mellon. And I am outraged that a Mellon, Chris Mellon, is outright lying to the American people about this. And so he is very upset about it um, because, you know, when I first met him, I was kind of shocked. He said, look, my whole family are fascists. I, I, you know, of course, that term is misused all the time now. Anyone you disagree with, someone calls you a fascist. But in this case, he meant literally. <laughs> that his, and, and I'm going, what? <laughs> and, and the conversation went from there. So it's a three-hour interview. But um, I, I've met him about five, six years ago, and I've been, you know, developing a dialogue with um, uh, John Warner IV. And it's, it's very interesting because, you know, I think that, you know, some of the things that he talked about, like one of the really explosive things in this interview is that a member of his, a friend of his family who was a very senior national intelligence person, um, uh, his father was a general, had a safe. And when he died, I, I don't know if it was unexpected, the son, who was a friend of, of, of John Warner's, uh, had to get some Navy SEAL guys to blow the frickin' hinges off of it. And inside it were all these diagrams, stamped Air Force, that had drawings and all the information in German of these anti-gravity devices. But that research continued long after the war, even in Germany. So some of them were dated into the 50s. So this is the kind of content, and I think it's a very important part of the history because the kind of deception that's been going on, it isn't new. It's just now going straight into the mainstream media under direction of the intelligence community and straight out of the U.S. government to the masses of the people. And there is no one out there telling the truth and correcting this story, and some people need to step up to this. Now, obviously, what I'm disclosing and talk about right now is extremely dangerous. They don't really care if people think there are aliens. They don't really care if people think there are UAPs, UFOs, or whatever fake acronym they make up tomorrow. They don't want people to know that there are these covert uh, capabilities we have and that we've been engaging in deception and false flags, and the big one is coming. That's the big story that is in this documentary that's going to be revealed called, and the documentary is called The Cosmic Hoax, because it is the hoaxing of a cosmic threat uh, off planet that is designed. That, you know, if people think some of the draconian things that have happened with COVID are bad, wait till they roll this thing out if you want to lose all your liberties. So this is really important that people understand what the significance of this issue is and that we're right on the cusp. This is the third week of April, right? The beginning of the fourth week of April. And this is coming out on, on a fast track in June and this summer, unless we do something collectively, all of us, to correct the record and defang this monster. And the monster is the false flag. Now, the this report uh, due in June and everybody's yeah. been speculating about the content of it when this alleged leak happened last week. And I'm thinking to myself, if this is the approach and this is how <laughs> this is going to be presented, this has nothing to do with ET or UFOs or, or anything interstellar. It has everything to do with a defense initiative and terrestrial objects uh, that that need to be dealt with, and that's what's being presented to the Senate. The Senate's not going to be talking about little green men. The Senate's going to be talking about drones, right? There isn't <laughs> another way to look at it, right? Well, there's a lot of ways to pivot this and spin it. The, the, the thing that concerns me is that the consistent narrative that is attached to all these, quote, leaks, which aren't leaks, is the national security threat. And it's not. And if, if it was, uh, we would know it by now. Interesting, one of the generals we have on tape from Russia that's coming forward discloses the fact that many years ago, he was involved in an incident where apparently some of the nuclear warheads they had in the Soviet Union or Russia 
were not getting temperature controlled and were beginning to overheat. And E.T., Kraft, and Beans came in, sort of put everyone in sort of a, a, a induced sort of fog, stupor, and went in and fixed the problem so those things wouldn't explode. Why is that? When we detonate anything of a mass of, say, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, or bigger, there is a disruption, not just on Earth, but through frequencies that go beyond the speed of light that disrupt other planets, other worlds, and other dimensions. This is what also we're going to be presenting in a very important case that my good friend Paula Harris has, has had for eight or nine years I've known about of an event I think more significant than Roswell. And that's going to be disclosed and presented also on uh, the 25th, on this coming Sunday, April 25th, from 1 till 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we're doing this out of a home in Scottsdale since we couldn't get an auditorium. But all of this is, of course, I want to remind people, this is the 20-year anniversary of the National Press Club event. You know, it had nearly a billion people uh, watch that launched the, the global disclosure movement. So we thought, you know, this is a great timing and, and it's something we can educate the public on. And then all of that's going to get filmed and then shortened down and put into this uh, very quick uh, emergency documentary. Would it surprise you um, if this uh, task force report mentions directly or alludes to uh, E.T. or something interstellar? Um, it would because, you know, they, it, you know, if you look at people who are shilled for the defense establishment, other people like Nick Pope or Chris Mellon or any of these people, they always have this studied agnosticism like, well, we don't really know what these are, and it's a mystery, and we need more funding to find out. Well, that's nonsense. They know damn good and well what they are. They have a little role to play, and they tell the public what they're told to tell the public. No one is this stupid, Jimmy. Mm. So, look, they, but these people, in fact, Luis Elizondo told a member of our team, uh, uh, Daniel Sheehan, who's a renowned civil rights and constitutional attorney, who is also going to be at this event uh, presenting really some explosive material uh, also. And it flat out said to him, we know that these extraterrestrials are there and they're not hostile, but you can't get money for the defense establishment unless there's a threat. Interestingly, I was on a clubhouse uh, show and George Knapp uh, was on and he said, look, Dr. Greer, the issue is you can't get money with dandelions and butterflies. And I said, what are you talking about? He says, you, you can't get money for peace and love and contact like what I'm doing. He says, you've got to present there's a problem. There's got to be a threat. There has to be a threat to the national security. And that's how you get the money. So you see, there is a built-in a bias to present it that way for the good old-fashioned almighty money and power game. And you can't, and, and, and both these people independently, one to me on a clubhouse interview, George Knapp, and then you had Elizondo say this directly to Daniel Sheehan, the, the, the renowned constitutional civil rights attorney, and said, look, it has to be presented as a threat. How else are we going to get more money for the defense establishment and the contractors? So that's the game being played. People need to just, you know, realize how, unfortunately, cynical all this is. Well, I, I, the facts are the facts, Dr. Greer. As far as I know, no ships have been sunk, right? <laughs> no, no planes have been shot out of the sky. No buildings in Manhattan have been leveled, as far as I know, right? I mean, wh where is the threat? The threat is verbal, right? It's, I, I, don't, I don't know of anything uh, uh, fact. I I don't know. I is there an event well, that or, happened or that we don't know about? Threat, well, they may start releasing false and concocted events. That, like, if you look at the History Channel series that the TTSA was involved in, where they showed this Italian chopper that was attacked. Well, they didn't fail to mention that that was a clandestine operation done by our covert unacknowledged special access projects. So there are some things that can be presented, and if us is zooming us it's us doing it humans doing it now obviously there's a compelling reason to, to do a little bit of that my concern is 
they're going to escalate it. They could escalate it to, well, here are some things that have happened that are really frightening things that these things have done to us. And then they start hoaxing more of them because they have the means to do it. They have the technology. The humans, covert programs, have the ability to do it. They also have the intent and the who would benefit from this the same people who benefited from the secrecy for 70 years. So that's why I titled the paper when disclosure, meaning fake disclosure, serves secrecy. It serves the same industrial powers and fascist interests that have benefited from the secrecy for 75 years. Is, is Vladimir Putin laughing right now? Everybody knows what's going on. You can read the own, their own headlines and, RT, uh, Russia Today, uh, loves these headlines, and everybody's participating in it, and they see what's going on. You know, what do you do with, with China and Russia right now and their attitude with the way that we're dealing with this? Is, is, it, is it comedy at this point? No, they're very, very, very concerned um, because they know that there's a, a, a clandestine operation. It isn't just U.S. It's international, mm -hmm. transnational, as I say. And this thing, if it gets out of control and they pull the trigger on what I have been briefed on. Now remember, in, in 1997, a lot of people don't know this happened before the Disclosure Project got launched. I had a, a, a gathering in Washington, D.C. to brief members of Congress. And the day before, the, the people who were going to be military whistleblowers who were there uh, we had a meeting so everybody get to know each other and feel comfortable and one of them has shared that uh, he was on an interagency committee in 1974 that had the ability to push a button and launch an attack and have events happen that everyone in the world including most of our government leaders would think it was an attack from outer space and he says and it's us doing it We've had, and he said that system was fully operational long before I got into that command. Now, he would never come. I know his name, his address. Every, he wouldn't come public with it because he's scared. But I have had multiple men who've been in those interagency assets and in the control systems and what the technologies are and how that could be done. We are sitting ducks if that happens. And this is why... Sunlight is the great disinfectant. We have to show, shine a light on that and say, don't be fooled by these capabilities. Now, they will look like they're alien because, uh, you know, 75, 80 years and trillions of dollars in covert funding to study these technologies, there have been some big paydays and breakthroughs in technologies. And you're not going to see that on CNN or, or the New York Times. So those are the assets that would be deployed in this kind of a false flag, this cosmic hoax of a threat. Um, so I think we have to figure out the, how we are we gonna, when, when this whole subject you and I are talking about tonight are blacklisted from the mainstream media, mm -hmm. and who knows soon, even from the internet, how do we get this information out and warn people so they're not deceived? Well, I have a team in Washington setting up briefings and meet between myself and members of Senate Intelligence Committee and others, that's what I can do. Everyone else can help us find whistleblowers, but also when we release this film, because you don't have to buy it, get it, download it, get everyone you know. If you know a rock star who has 50 million followers, hey, please put this on your site. It's for free. No intellectual property holdbacks. That's what we're going to do with this because it's an, it's an emergency. The, uh, the other part of this, I uh, would love your insight. It feels, if I was going to take a guess, right, if I was going to go maybe to Vegas and throw some money down, I would hmm. say that what is happening not only with mass media, social media, uh, uh, Washington, uh, Rubio, but you also have science and their chatter about alien life and fast radio bursts and exoplanets and the search for uh, alien life and 20 billion Earth-like planets in the Milky Way. All of these conversations are happening, and it's all being laid out for the world, for the public, all at the same time. And if I'm a yep. betting man, 
I'm saying that this is a concerted effort to get out in front of something else that they know is about to happen. And I don't know what that could be, but it seems like it's never been like this before, Dr. Greer. And and you've been at this for a long time. And this conversation of E.T. and aliens and UFOs has never been at this level before. Could it be no, that there is something that the government knows about that is eminent that they can't control? Well, there are things that are eminent that they can't control. And that's another discussion. My concern is they're going to try to seize the narrative by presenting it as a threat from outer space mm -hmm. to try to control the populace during that time. Frankly, I think a lot of what the response has been to COVID is right. a beta test of that system. I agree. It's a, it, it's a beta test of that system. How far can totalitarian central control of the population be uh, achieved, how much can be achieved, and how much will the people go along with it? Um, and, and they found out people go along with anything if they're scared enough, right? So that is sort of the, the, the foundation of it. Now, are there other things that could be in the wind, in the wings? Yes. Um, and th there, there's a, a huge concern. One of the big problems is, and I think let's just put the cards on the table and take the mask off, we are 100 years past the expiration date for having used fossil fuels to run the planet, and now we're destroying the biosphere. We are destroying the oceans. We are destroying. There's so much damage happening. Then you add into that the damage that's been done and the concern in other worlds, on other planets, by atomic and, and nuclear weapons and the disruption that happens through trans-dimensional frequencies that go beyond the speed of light. Now let's add in a clandestine human operation that have weaponized faster than the speed of light interstellar technologies and are actively targeting extraterrestrial vehicles. Now, you can see we're in a crisis. It feels, I, I think that um, uh, there are people that understand that it's no longer in their control. And uh, it goes back to, you know, Ronald Reagan's uh, famous uh, series of speeches. He didn't do just one at the United Nations. He mentioned this, I believe, eight times in a year, which is, yep. you know, this extraterrestrial presence. And, uh, you know, we need to come together as one. Well, I agree with you that the the effort within the media uh, for the last year and a half effectively controlled the entire planet. No country uh, wasn't affected, and everybody got in line. It was it was like lemmings to the sea, wasn't it? And they figured it out. And we always wondered when that day would happen, and we went through it in 2020. And if you want the evidence of it just reflect go back and think about right. what happened in 2020 yep yep by a bioengineered virus crazy when you think about it crazy and it was everything yeah. else that went along with it too as well it wasn't you know it just wasn't one specific thing it was every segment of society uh it was different reasons it was financial it was companies it was unemployment it was racism it was politics it was the election it was the weather right it was like everything was dumped at the same time with fear and control tied to it incredible to watch and witness well remember that goebbels the the propaganda chief radolf hitler at the nuremberg trials famously said when asked how did you get all of the German people to go along. He says, oh, very glibly. He goes, oh, it was easy. We just created enough fear that everyone fell in the line. So, look, this is, this is what demagogues and totalitarian fascist-type people have learned how to do over the years. And, and what we have to do is wake up and say, we're not going to play that game. And we're not going to allow ourselves to be, you know, marched off the cliff like lemmings. But I think the problem is it's very hard to do that when you have the tech giant. And, you know, interestingly, Joe Rogan, who is a, a podcast guy, when I was on a show a few years ago, in order for him to get his $100 million in Spotify, he was forced to take my interview with him 
out of his archive. Yeah, I saw that. I saw yeah. that. So, uh, much, so much for free speech. Ah. Uh, you know, um, so much for free speech. Yeah, as they always say, right? Any publicity is good publicity. And and when I saw that, and and I heard it, and then I read it, I think you shot me an email about it too, as well. And and I went and looked and checked, and sure enough, and and here's Joe, the bastion of free speech, right? Right. That's right. That's just what a, yeah. What a fraud, what a fraud. I'll say on the record. What a sellout and a fraud for $100 million. Look, the head of Army Intelligence offered me $2 billion not to do what I'm doing. This guy sells out for you know $100 million and goes along with it. He could have said, no, you cannot censor a, a, you know m- the content of my shows. But to get his $100 million payday, he went along with it. Dr. Greer, thank you so much. And uh, when does everything kick off uh, this Sunday again? one o'clock uh pacific time which of course is four o'clock eastern four o'clock eastern serious disclosure.com everything that everybody needs is right over there and of course the new documentary is uh uh going to be completed and out hopefully by june i believe and if you want to help and contribute to that go to ce5film.com and again the links are over at jimmychurchradio.com. Dr. Greer, thank you yeah, so I much. Thank, I want, yeah, and I, I just one big thank you to everyone who's helped so far. We launched that a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it's been a very successful, and we, I'm, we're all really touched and d- grateful for everyone who's helped us, and thanks, thanks to everybody. I look forward to uh, our next conversation. I'll go back to work. All right. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> I'll talk to you. Thank you, Dr. Greer. Okay. And uh, the uh, break, I went through uh, the commercial break, and so I am going to do that now. Dr. Stephen Greer, what, a, what a, just amazing, amazing. And I wonder what this photograph is all about. I'm going to come back and open up the phone lines. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, The Planet. Stay with me, 747 747- Two two eight two zero five one. I'll be right back. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRA Radio dot com. <laughs> Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Fade or not. When you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. <laughs> KGRARadio.com. 
You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Rhys Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Man, got an itch in my eye. I want to thank Dr. Stephen Greer for coming in, and he was on very, very limited time tonight, and uh, we, we will uh, get him back as soon as he gets everything finished this weekend, and then we'll circle back and, and do a full show. <laughs> the Bunker Chair makes a special return. Oh, so apparently I left the Bunker Cam on during the break so you guys got a little sneak preview of what goes on in here uh during the break but there you go i've opened up the phone lines three uh i almost said the phone number of one of the incoming calls uh uh 747-228-2051 747-228-2051 as i'm bringing in calls you're gonna get the hold music you're going on hold but stay right there and uh, I will bring everything in in order. 747-228-2051. Many, many things were just said in the last hour. Uh, went a little over, uh, 70 minutes, uh, with Dr. Greer. Um, now, I knew about uh, this photograph. I didn't, have, and when I was told about it, I, I was thinking that uh i was thinking flying saucer that's uh, you know i was thinking like some kind of craft and that's what was um in in my mind's eye and getting clarification tonight here we go uh we've got uh, a being of, of of something uh being dissected uh with suits and medical personnel uh standing around um, and look, visions, I know what everybody uh, immediately started to think. Um, and that's uh, what we went through with Jaime Massan about five, six, seven years ago now. And I hope it's not that. Um, uh, I think Dr. Greer is very cautious about when he says, you know, we went to, uh, went to New York, went to uh, the art museum there and had them look at this and, and others. He's going to authenticate this the best that he can, and he's certainly been aware of the photograph for a long time, but that's going to be revealed this Sunday. Wow. Uh, yeah. It's going to be very interesting. Very interesting. And the next thing is this documentary. He's going to fast track this. Uh, his last two films, Unacknowledged and uh, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, as we all know, uh, took... Uh, uh, quite a quite a long time to get those done. A couple of years, you know. I know the director and uh, Michael Mazzola, and I know the effort uh, that he went through on both of those films to get those done. It was tough, and to turn around and fast track something uh, in a in a couple of months that's that's a lot of work. But free distribution and just putting it out there that is very lots of information. This space treaty, this arms treaty. That's incredible. That's incredible. Um, and I like his take also. Uh, I'm going to get to the calls now. Um, his take on, on the leaks, that these aren't leaks, that these are uh, deliberate. They know what they're releasing. And uh, there isn't, <laughs> nobody leaked anything. And uh, I find that interesting because, and I'll tell you why, um, because there's been no outrage uh, from Washington or the Pentagon 
uh, the the Navy, the spokespeople, you know, uh, the, we're going to go after who leaked these videos. Uh, this is part of a, a report being prepared for the Senate Intelligence Committee. And, uh, you know, no, nothing. It's because uh, it wasn't leaked. <laughs> there is nothing in the videos. Just the Navy filming drones. It's not that big of a deal. Isn't that interesting? All right. With that, let's get to the phones. Uh, oh, the, oh, the man, Navy. I, I did it again. I did it again. I've got to. Uh, I apologize uh, to uh, whoever is on hold. Uh, I keep doing that. I'm looping back the show into uh, the phone system, and it's unintentional. All I got to do is mute that channel, and uh, I apologize for that. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hey, Mr. Church, Chuckles from Pennsylvania, sir. Hey, Chuck, how you doing tonight, man? Doing great. That was an outstanding, like you said, 60, 70 minutes there with Dr. Greer. Um, absolutely outstanding. And, you know, um, one of the first things that came to my head was how the faders can know, no bout of doubt it, as I say, we got to support and help this. Um, so anyway... I already posted it up. We got to do a watch party Sunday, man. All of us. Like, like we all got to somehow be together and watch this on Sunday to get our information and to get our, you know, awesomeness together with this. Somehow, some way. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to set up a watch party, but I'm throwing out the idea, if, if you know what I mean, because you had an outstanding interview tonight. We got to. Keep it going, man. Yeah, there was a lot of information uh, compacted into that. Uh, that was nonstop. That was a three-hour oh, wow. show <laughs> that was just uh, compressed into uh, 60 minutes or so. And uh, all new information. That was, uh, wow, wow. I mean, uh, there's a lot to, uh, to digest oh, there. And as you were listening to it, what stands out? Well, I mean, I've always liked, number one, I've always, you know, really in love Dr. Greer's, what I think is his basic message of, you know, uh, this is not a threat, um, you know, and, and I, and I've heard just, we've all been talking about it for, well, it seems like a year now that this awesome drip, 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 something's coming. I think there's absolutely no doubt in my mind. I don't know when, but something's going to come that makes this reality, whatever the reality is, it makes it undeniable. And again, what has me scared, I think I've even mentioned this even focals. I'm truly scared that when the reality becomes real, there's a threat narrative behind it, which could be a complete worldwide di disaster. So, I mean, everything Dr. Greer spoke about, um, you know, some of the interviews, um, the, the name is slipping me, but like the one member of that family that, you know, and, and this picture, what is this? Like, I mean, so much. That's why I was like, okay, step one, cause this, I'm frankly feeling overwhelmed in a good way. Let's all hang together Sunday so we can all take the information in together. Kind of like a, a like fade fade to black fun day Sunday watch party or something, just so we all can keep it going because we got to squish the fear factor. That's my mission, man. Squish squish the fear. Thank you right? so much, Chuck, and uh, give my best to yeah. Kara and and thank you for the sure. phone call. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow right. night on Fader Night, my man. Thank you so much. Absolutely, and fade to black. It's time to fade to black. Thank you, Chuck. Have a great night. And uh, I can't, I can't argue uh, uh, with Chuck on on any of that. Uh, not not argue. I, I think his points are all valid. Um, it, is is where I'm going with that. And uh, the threat narrative, which I have been talking about. Been talking about the threat narrative now for for three years, almost four years, when all of this started with the New York Times back in December of 2017, where suddenly everything shifted. 
you know, it's it's threat, 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 fear, airspace, Navy, military personnel. We've got to keep them safe. There's something invading our airspace. Threat, 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 threat. It was everywhere. It was everywhere. And uh, it was uh, it was nonstop. It was nonstop. And I'm I'm confused about that. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hi, it's Corey. Hi, Corey. How are you, man? Good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Now that I'm talking to you, I'm even no, better. I, no, you, you, well, you said that you were you were a little cranky. I'm very cranky. You want to <laughs> you want to okay. test me, Corey? You want to test me? <laughs> you know what? Okay, here's what I want to talk about. Okay, so first off, you know, I'm so glad Chuck called in because you know Chuck has been a good friend, just you know, and just. And also, I'm just ca- going to have to say, a lot of Fader Nuts, we are friends, and that is so cool. So what I want to what I want to talk about is, um, how come we're kind of like, are we really like trying to get this planet like uh, messed up, and then then just try to move? <laughs> are we going to go to you know what i mean yeah i do man i do i do i do i talk I about mean, it all the time I, I know i know let's i know take care of it yeah, right uh, yeah we do uh we are going to have to get off this planet at some point before the sun well, you true. know burns us up um but yeah. until then and that could be you know that could be a million years from now it could be a hundred million years from now but yeah, no matter could, what, yeah. we got to go. And this is the other the other point. So until then, we still got to live here. You know, we want our right. children and grandchildren and the generations to enjoy. This is a beautiful place, man. It is just awesome. It is. It but, is. But, I think this is Eden. I think it's we, Eden. But we have everything else to think about. And it's not just the sun turning this into a lump of coal, which will happen. Right. Uh, that's inevitable, but we have things. Eventually. We have things like natural disasters, or an asteroid, or like comet a strike, effect, uh, or like the the sun, you know, doing what it does. Which it, you know, since solar was, flares. The, was it the eighteen solar flares? Yeah, right. solar flares. Hundred, like something happened, and it's going to happen, man. It could happen tomorrow. Man. Yeah, it could happen tomorrow, and uh, uh, nuclear war. We could kill ourselves you know there's well, everything that Greer was talking about right 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 right, right. all of those things that, could it, it come into play terrifies me. all of those yeah, things it could totally is but yeah the fear yep thing yep is kind of like uh i really just because i don't want to hear about the fear thing doesn't mean it's not real well um and we have to uh, uh, consider so many other things. Um, right. Not only... Yes, there's uh, a lot. Uh, yeah. We have global warming. We have uh, other issues uh, that, that are happening all the time. So what do, right. we, what do we do about all of those? Collectively, I think as a planet, um, we have to right. figure out a way to get off the treadmill to get off of our focus, which is, you know, a, a house with a, a three car garage and a pool in the back. And that's what you need to do for the rest of your life is, is, okay. is go to work and pay taxes and consume and buy things because that is happiness. That's not happiness. And so no, we, some we, people don't even have to do that. No, we've got to get out of that. You know, we've right. got it. that that education uh, starts when you're in kindergarten. That education starts on yeah. TV, yeah. you know, and and, right. and things. So there are certain mindsets that we've got to get out of. And certainly we've got to take care of everybody on this planet um, equally. Thank you. We have to get Thank through you. that. And we have to. Why? Get, what? We do. We do. And you know what? I'm of the mind that, uh, you know, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I think we actually originated probably like panspermia, stuff like that. I think that we probably did migrate from Mars to Earth. 
that's just me. Uh, yes, and <laughs> because I, I, I believe mean, that there was, and through like you mentioned earlier, like uh, 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 Isaiah, and those are very the Isaiah scrolls. Those are very interesting because also like a lot of like holy scripture is like there was a war in heaven. And right, like right, right. Weir right. talks about like right. I, yeah, yeah. And uh, in listen, uh, Corey. Before I get to uh, the break, I've only sure. got about sixty seconds. I have okay, often sorry. thought of one, and it's very basic, but one, uh, one idea. When it comes to Mars, at one point. Mars was just like Earth. They had an atmosphere. They had uh, they had magnetic yep. protection of the atmosphere. Yep. They had oceans. They had rivers. They had everything. They had yep. oxygen and nitrogen, and and they were good to go. It's right. now a dead planet. Earth right. could be that one day, but the point being, whoever was there, if there was you know a civilization there, and I think that there was, but they knew that uh, their atmosphere had changed. It had been removed. Uh, the core in the center of the planet stopped rotating. Ours is molten iron, right? And it's moving. Oh, um, yeah. I, I, yeah. It, it, not Mars is solid. It's got a solid core. It, right. It's frozen. It's just a rock with a little thin atmosphere. They had to get off that planet. And they're looking, well, they're looking to out it? to the sky, I mean, and they see a blue planet out there. They know Earth and it's is there. Beautiful, and guess what? We came here. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't doubt that at all. I, I really don't. I don't. Anything That's is possible. Where I'm going, man. Anything is possible, but that is very, very possible. Corey, enjoy the rest of your night, my man. Thank you so much. Hey, man. I love you so much. Right back at you, Corey. You know that, man. Now go behave in the sandbox. I will. I will. I'll talk to you, man. Night. It's time to fade to black. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I t could, could, could that be a possibility? Mars came here. We might have to go back to Mars, you know, and when the sun expands and it's going to expand, when the sun expands, it, uh, it, it may reach out and touch earth. Mars may be safe. It's going to get roasted. But it, through these transitions, it, it's going to be a little bit more hospitable out there than it is here. We got to make the move. Got to make the move. Got to make the move. And then from there, we continue on out. I'm just saying. This is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. 747-228-2051. 747-228-2051. want to thank Dr. Stephen Greer for coming in tonight. An amazing conversation. Lots of stuff. All packed into 60 minutes. I want to hear from all of you. 747-228-2051. I'll be right back. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Metal Guard, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station. Salt Lake City, Utah. Van Buren, Arkansas. Why is it we're not very good with our health regimen? until it's too late. We don't put oil in the car until the engine blows up. When the body's out of balance, your health is not so good. Give your body some love. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Try our Life Change Tea, which cleanses you from harmful intruders. A clean colon is one of the ways to bring the body in balance. We also carry organic supplements to help you get where you need to go. So do your body a favor. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. You can even visit our sales page to save some dough. Uh, does anybody call money dough anymore? Anyway, if you're looking for short, helpful health tips, go to YouTube and punch in Health Matters Now. That's Health Matters Now. So log on to GetTheTea.com, shop, get balanced, then learn some cool tips at Health Matters Now. You'll be glad you did. That's GetTheTea.com. Your contact for current news and trending topics. KGRARadio.com. 
This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black blend coffee from River Moon. Just click on the River Moon coffee banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Promo code F2B blend. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. KGRARadio.com. When you're in the house for longer periods of time, you can see them flying or running across the floor. Ooh, yuck. They're unhealthy, gross, and disgusting. Bugs. I loathe bugs. We keep a clean home, but occasionally bugs show up. Well, I found something that is tougher than bugs. Orange Guard. On contact, it kills hidden bugs, including ants, roaches, and fleas. Plus, Orange Guard is a residual repellent. All of the ingredients of Orange Guard are on the FDA generally recognized as safe list. Orange Guard may be used around food, humans, and pets. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Orange Guard, available at orangeguard.com, Whole Foods, and Ace Hardware. Gold loves chaos uncertainty and disarray. History shows us what gold does when people aren't sure, aren't sure about the government, the stock market, their jobs, or their retirement savings. Our national debt is skyrocketing. Gold and other precious metals are a defense measure against inflation and a stock market that might take years to recover. So what can you do right now to protect yourself? Call United Gold Group. We offer gold and other precious metals delivered securely within 72 hours. Are you worried about the stock market, we can also help you set up a real gold or silver IRA or a 401k. Safe and secure, United Gold Group makes gold ownership affordable. Call now and get up to $2,500 in free gold or silver with a qualified IRA. Call 800-753-8534. That's 800-753-8534 or visit unitedgoldgroup.com. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. Welcome back. Fade to Black, I'm your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. Tonight, Dr. Greer was on with us. An action-packed 60, 70 minutes uh, with Dr. Greer, and lots of stuff uh, was presented. Uh, That was was a conversation right there. I want to hear from all of you, 747-228-2051. And what is on your mind with everything that was just laid out in front of us? It was a pretty incredible conversation. With that, 747-228-2051. 747-228-2051. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hi, Jimmy. It's Shauna from Calgary, Alberta. Hi, Shauna from Calgary, Alberta. How are you? (laughs) I don't know if I'm good. How are you? It's uh, an incredible night on the show. Did you uh, did you Tell hear me. did you hear the full interview? I didn't hear the full interview. Um, I just wanted to say first before I ask my question, Lola says hi. I don't know if you remember her, but she called in a couple years ago. She drew the picture of the alien abducting the cow and all that stuff. But Lola, she says hi. yes, <laughs> yeah. Wow. (laughs) Well, that goes back. Yeah, that goes back a ways. I remember the, uh, 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 how is she? (laughs) Didn't I I talk? I talked to her briefly, didn't I? 
Yeah, she called in, and you uh, were a little hesitant. Uh, do you have a parent with you? Yeah, or well, you by when somebody calls in, yeah. you know, that's that young, especially her voice, right? I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Hold on a minute here. Do you have permission? She's so cute. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was incredible. That was incredible. So, so uh, my question is, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, so your question is, yeah, so I, I really love Dr. Greer, so I hope nobody takes this the wrong way. I love what he does. He's been a real eye-opener. But if I've learned anything this year, it's been really question every single source, everything you hear from everybody. You don't know who is truth and who's not, and, and I don't think he's not speaking truth. But I'm just really curious what your thoughts on are why there's been so many truth accounts that have been, say, you know, deleted off of YouTube and censored, yet he's got a YouTube account up. And I'm just curious what what your thoughts are on that. And again, like I said, I, I do believe what he's saying. I, I do really respect him. He seems like a very genuine, caring individual, but I just find it weird. Do you think maybe he's protected in some way? or? Uh, that's certainly possible. Okay, I'll just come yeah. straight out and say that. Um, I'm curious okay. to what your thoughts are, but before I get to that, um, with YouTube, remember, um, I have a, a YouTube channel um, that has yep. Yep. Uh, featured a lot of people that have been banned uh, and removed uh, from YouTube. Um, I have personally removed some of those videos myself. Um, because I, I want this show to continue, right? And I was, yeah, de I no, was demonetized I by YouTube for over a year. And, uh, yeah. when that happened, I stopped, uh, broadcasting on YouTube. I think, uh, uh, we were limited on our uploads because I didn't want uh, YouTube to have the satisfaction of winning. Um, we fought it and, um, they, uh, they messed with me, and they still do. But that being said, you have to play within the rules. And I yeah. think Dr. Greer has figured out a way uh, to push the boundaries, but still st staying in bounds. And there's a certain art to that. Um, I, I still see, I get emails uh, from people, and I see people posting where they said, have told me that, uh, YouTube has removed my channel. They've demonetized me. They've done this and that. Can you help? And um, my answer to anybody that has those issues is, what is it that you did? What did you yeah. <laughs> do? Most people, um, and I'm not being negative here, but most people won't tell the public the truth right uh as as yep. to what happened now some were taken down because uh you're spreading disinformation and and you are seriously crossing uh lines of ethics and and morals and indirect violations to their terms of service which you are bound to there's another thing of though course, yeah. there's another thing here that is uh for me shauna that is front and center okay and i'm going to say this directly i don't care who i offend but freedom <laughs> of speech as it is laid out in our constitution and in the bill of rights has nothing to do with private companies freedom of speech is with and against the government Okay, so Correct. the government yeah. cannot repress your freedom of speech or your ability to do that. You can go with your banned, removed YouTube channel and go on the steps of Congress uh, or the Capitol Hill with a megaphone and demonstrate all day long and say whatever you want to say. That's freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. Okay, freedom mm -hmm. of speech has nothing to do with Twitter with YouTube, with Facebook, or any other private company, and that includes Fox or CNN or ABC, NBC, CBS, the LA Times, the New York Times. Freedom of speech does not give Shauna the right to, uh, to write an article for the New York Times and put it on the front page or any page in the paper 
What you're, totally. is yeah. that? Is that repression of freedom? They won't let me post. They won't let me write an article for the New York. Of course they. If they, <laughs> it's their choice. They yeah. won't let me on CNN. Well, that's CNN's <laughs> choice, right? And so, yeah. the confusion starts with uh, the ability for Twitter or Facebook or YouTube for any individual uh, to go on the platform free of charge, sign the, Mm -hmm. click on and uh, agree to the terms of service and start a channel. Anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. Now, what you put on that channel and its acceptability is not up to you. It's up to yeah. it's up to Facebook. It's up to yeah. YouTube. You don't have any freedom of speech rights there. And then the argument comes up, well, you know, but they're using public publicly paid for internet lines and and so, you know, they, they, this is a public thing. No, it's not. And and I'll take <laughs> things a step further. I'm going to give you two points when it comes to this. Number 1, You can go into a restaurant, any restaurant, and see a sign that says, we refuse the right, (laughs) right? We, that's it. Yeah. Right? And, And you can get kicked out of a restaurant. You can get kicked out of a bar. You act up, you're out, right? You go Which into sense, yeah. uh, you go into you remember the famous signs no shoes no ser- no shoes no shirt no service right and they used to post yeah. that in the in the seventies uh, convenience stores and things but that's their right and the other point totally. that I want to make is if Shauna builds a website Shauna dot com right and on that website you have a forum. You have a chat room. You have a comment section. And then somebody is coming in there and your website is about kittens. And you have somebody coming into the forum going, man, uh, whatever it is, right? Uh, uh, Vaccination, right? And, And you're like, wait a minute. This is my website. I own it. And we are talking about kittens here. Take your stuff somewhere. Yep. No, I have the right. I have the right. Freedom of speech. I, I can post here. No, you can't. Now, do you want that freedom taken away from you? You've, you've invested your family's money, your savings. You poured <laughs> your heart out into this website to have somebody tell you what to do. No. Yeah, I got you. You know, and that's that's it. That's it. That there there is no art. So if you choose to have a channel and you click on terms of service, you have to play by their rules. It's their com- it's not yours. You don't own it. You're not paying for anything, right? <laughs> You're not. Mm-hmm. It's 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 mm-hmm. crazy to me. Yeah. Now, as much as I am about freedom of speech, um, and and the foundation, the very fabric that this country was built on was to have that ability for the public to say what they want against the government without fear of being thrown in prison. That's a fundamental right. And, and we need to constantly go back and be reminded of how great this country is and what we can do here. You don't have those freedoms in, in most of the world. You don't. Trust me, mm-hmm. you don't. In countries that are seem free <laughs> and 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 have a great you know public and citizens of, of their country, they don't have those freedoms that we have here. They don't have them. Yeah. But that doesn't mean right, and you can't take it to the next level. There's there's just no way. All of the arguments that have put into place, I posted, uh, Shauna uh, last year. I posted uh, the Bill of Rights, posted it up, posted it right there, freedom of speech and what it is. And it's literally like five sentences. And it is very, very clear, you know, and Mm -hmm. you can't you can't Mm -hmm. argue with it. It was glorious writing. And for our uh, uh, creators of the Bill of Rights and the Constitution and the foundations of this country, 
back in 1776 and and how they pursued that obviously they didn't know about phones and the internet and mass communications and everything else at television and everything else that was about to happen they didn't know but the the writing and the idea is so clever and so smart it applies to today right and that yeah. is that is what's so beautiful about it so um i just think that stephen uh stephen greer and anybody else uh, that didn't get kicked off the net. They they just play within the rules. That's all you have to do. You just got to yeah. play by the rules. Play by the rules, or go create your sense. own. Or go create your own YouTube channel, uh, your own YouTube network, your own video platform, and have at it. Right? <laughs> go do your own thing. Yeah. You know, so you can't kick yeah. yourself off. So there you go. Shauna, thank you for the phone calls. Right. Sorry I was so thank long-winded you. with my answer. No, that's okay. But I'm going <laughs> to stick to it. All right. Have a good night. You too, Shauna. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, Lola, who called in, that was one of the most uh, uh, incredible nights on this show. And I think back to that. That was, and, and she's so right. I said, wait a minute. Are your parents there? I need I need approval. I need approval right now. 747-228-2051. Uh, what an incredible uh, conversation tonight with uh, Dr. Stephen Greer. And I do. I want to hear from all of you. 747-228-2051. And uh, with that, hold on. I got to I got to bring in. Uh, man, I'm not going to be able to get to everybody tonight. I'm going to do it again. Here we go. 747-228-2051. 747-228-2051. You're watching me on the camera. You can see what's going on. Uh, the phones are are blowing up, and I just don't want uh, people to get ignored. And I do have a tendency to do that, especially when I'm manning my own phones. But I'm getting better at it. I've had eight, nine years of practice. Seven four seven two two eight two zero five one. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hi, Jimmy. It's Fran. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. What? I'm just calling in. Yes. What? I, I'm listening to you, I Fran. I'm excited. Hi. That's it. Just, I just hi. To say hi. You haven't everybody. called. You haven't called me, and we we're friends. You haven't called me in three years. I know. Well, the last two or three times I tried to call in, it was like wait list, wait list. Yeah, I know. I, and I, I, I never got accepted in. Well, see. And it's like, oh, Jimmy doesn't love me anymore. No, see, <laughs> but, uh, you know, six, seven years ago, you were my only caller. So that was easy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, you always recognize my number. Oh, Arizona number. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't even look at the phone numbers anymore. I can't do it. Oh. It's, just, it's too busy around here. Fran, what are you up to? Did you listen to Dr. Greer tonight? No, actually, I got in late, so I missed it. But I love him. I mean, he's awesome. And you're awesome. <laughs> and I just wanted to call in once I got in and I went, Oh shit. Wow, I got in. Easy. Well, <laughs> you're going to have to go back and listen to this. Um, I've had, yeah, I will. I've had, I've had Dr. Greer on the show countless times. I don't even know. I know. Um, yeah, yeah. and, uh, it seems that after every show with Dr. Greer, we always kind of go, Holy crap. Did he say that? Uh, but tonight was, was one of those moments um, it was 70 minutes. I, I knew going in, uh, that I had very, very limited time, uh, to, uh, to speak with him tonight. And he's, he's very, very busy right now, like today and tomorrow. It's just crazy. Oh, sure. But, uh, so we knew that we had A, B, C, and D, uh, to squeeze in, and and we mm -hmm. pulled it off, and it was some incredible right stuff. I mean, he told it, Fran. He told us that he has got a photograph from what he thinks and experts believe 
uh, from the 1920s. He's saying 1920s. So the 1920s of uh, an alien autopsy. So, Whoa. yeah, and that is going to uh, be revealed. High res, high definition this Sunday on his webinar uh, that he is going to be oh, doing. Okay. So that's going to be presented. Um, I'm very excited about this photograph. This is the thing. You remember what uh, Jaime Musan, Richard Dolan, the UFO community, and everything else that went down with that Roswell alien pick uh, from, man, that was probably 2014, 2013, 2014. And all of the uh, researchers that got on uh, to that photograph, and they were able to uh, uh, figure out the writing that was on the little placard on on oh, this yeah. on this thing, and and how quickly that deflated. And if you remember, see, this is the thing. Let's not uh, let's not forget a, a couple of things that went down with that photograph. And this is why I think. Oh yeah, Doctor Crazy. Back it did. Then. It did. Jaime Musan rented. Uh, a ginormous auditorium. I forget, you know, 5,000 people right. or something. Um, did the yeah. live broadcast, brought in all the experts. They revealed the photograph. Yep, He's yep, selling yep. tickets and, and, and all of the, and that thing blew up in the worst way uh, for everybody. Yes, that it was, it, and it was quick too. It was minutes. It was minutes. It wasn't, it I didn't take remember. a couple of days. And, and what everybody went through. So that says to me, to anybody out there that is going to uh, present a photograph and, and know what, uh, not only what Jaime went through, oh man, Dolan, oh man. Right. Um, and yeah, Dolan had nothing, now. Dolan had nothing to do with it. And he was, yep. he was just guilty by association. He had nothing to do with any of it. But but he had to answer to so many uh, that that attacked him over something he had nothing to do with. But my oh my god, that was so stupid! I couldn't believe people were on him like that. I was like, wait a minute, he had nothing to do with this. Why are you attacking him? That's exactly it. And um, so Doctor Greer's a- aware of that. You you mm-hmm. uh, you cannot go and make an announcement like this and and do, without having your ducks in a row that you th- right. that's a career killer, right there. That's a reputation right. killer. So hopefully, you know, hopefully he's done his due diligence. I and, hope so. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, this is the thing. And I know everybody was thinking the exact same thing that I was. Uh, that I am thinking the alien autopsy film. So he's, you know, right. he's describing this photograph fan, Fran, he's describing it, you know, well, there's medical people there. There's some equipment in the background and there's this table and there's this dissection that's going on with his body and the thing and the equipment. And we're dating the equipment in the background. I'm th- All I can picture is the alien autopsy. And I'm just, right thinking about not only the image that we all have burned into our retinas and our frontal lobes of the uh, alien autopsy hoax yep. <laughs> um, is that uh, is 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 that where we are going I can't I mean if somebody's handed me a picture God uh, I hope not I want it to be something new. If somebody, well, I'm not saying it's the alien autopsy, a uh, still from the alien autopsy. Right. Nobody's that, uh, you know. But um, what I'm saying is, if somebody gave me a picture of an alien autopsy and I'm looking at it, I'm, I am, I, I am very careful. <laughs> That's all, man. I'm, oh, definitely. I just, I'm not going down that road. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Uh, but then I'm not going to be the one to present that to the world. So right. if, uh, Me do- either. yeah, <laughs> if Dr. Greer's willing to do this, uh, there you go. There you go. Um, it better be something spectacular. Are, are something you really new and unusual that we haven't seen yet? Well, he's got a, another documentary that he wants to crank out over the next couple of months. 
And I find that interesting, especially after Unacknowledged, which was very successful, and Close Encounters yeah. of the Fifth Kind, also very successful. Um, but yeah. he wants to, those films took a couple of years each uh, to, to oh, get yeah. completed. He's trying to do this in a couple of months, um, and it's going to have this image in the film and, and also other evidence. And I think he's calling it the Cosmic Hoax. I think that's the, I think okay. that's what he said. That's the name of uh, uh, the documentary. And so, wow, it was just a great interview, great interview, great conversation. Yeah. I can't I'll wait for you to hear it. To it tomorrow. You know, I wasn't home at the time that it was on, and when I came in, I clicked on your show. I went. I'm going to try and call in again just so I can say hi to everybody. Yeah, I'm watching <laughs> Twitter. Fran, Fran, Fran. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, f bomb! Uh, you did not. I didn't hear it. Bleep, Fran. Thank. Oh, you. Uh, um, when am I going to see you again? I have no idea. Okay. Seriously, with all this crap about the COVID stuff and everything, people are freaking out. And uh, I think your next thing is up in Laughlin, yes. which isn't that far away from me, but. I can't afford to go to those things. So I might just be hanging around outside if I can drive up there and <laughs> wave at everybody and go, hi, have a good time inside. You know, check it out. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's at uh, uh, the Aquarius Hotel and Casino. The Aquarius, yeah. So you can come there. in and hang out. You can come in and hang out. Plenty of restaurants, plenty of lounges. And I can guarantee you I, know. I will be there in force having a good time because I need it. Okay. Well, be, I I might just have to tackle you. <laughs> yeah. Well, and uh, and and bring me um uh what what's that what's that cinnamon? What's it called? That whiskey. Oh, Fireball. Fireball. I'll have a I'll, oh I'll have a God. I'll have a bottle of Fireball there for you. Okay. No no no. I'll no talk. no no. Jameson. Jameson. <laughs> I don't I don't even know what Jameson is. I have no idea. But oh that my fire, God. That fireball. I'm not a whiskey guy or a scotch guy. I, I but that fireball. It's Irish. Who? I know. Who? Me and uh, who had that? Uh, Les. Les was, had that in his backpack. And I think it was Gabriel. And I went. I think it was Gabriel. No, it was Les. It was Les. Yeah. I thought it I was said, Gabriel. So where's the whiskey? I know there's vodka here, but where's the whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> and he broke it open. I went, I cracked it and did a few shots out of the bottle. And everybody was like, damn. Yeah, I remember, well, I remember that. Drinking that I, shit. <laughs> we, we were, you got to stop with the language, Fran. This is a family show. Um, you know, it, it, the thing I is, any four year olds watching this. You're, you're so OG that you get a pass card. Fran, thank you so much, oh, and I, I hope to see you in Laughlin. I really do. Yeah, I'm hoping I can get up there just to hang out on the outside. There you that go. That would be cool. Fran. Okay, love you, Jimmy. I love you right back, Tell Fran. Tell Rita I love her, too. Sure will. Have a great night. Yeah, you too. Bye. Uh, Fran calling in. That uh, that is uh, That is... Sealing the deal on a pretty incredible night. I'm going to take a quick break right here. This is Fade to Black. I'll come back with more of your phone calls right after this. You can follow me on Twitter at JChurch Radio. Right? Do that. 747 228 2051. 747 228 2051. I'll be right back. Jimmy Church on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I take Life Change Tea supplements every single day. It's what I do. 
Click on their banner at jimmychurchradio.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. This is Billy Carson with ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Forbidden Knowledge TV has just reached its one-year anniversary. That's right. One year, and as a show of appreciation, we are giving all new subscribers a free 30-day trial of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. That's 30 days to binge watch thousands of movies, documentaries, conferences, workshops, lectures, yoga classes, meditation courses, and so much more. So log on to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv from your computer or mobile device or get the Forbidden Knowledge TV app on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, iTunes, or Google Play today and use coupon code 30 days free. That's coupon code 30 days free on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv today. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now, the Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Open line, 747 228 Dr. Stephen Greer came in tonight, 70 minutes of uh, back to back to back. It was a lot of revealing, and uh, I do want to hear from all of you. It was an incredible conversation. 747 let us go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Gabriel. Hey, man. What's up, Fireball? Oh, not so much. Just chilling, listening to Greer. You know he 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 goes on pretty quickly, doesn't he? Yeah, he got he got a lot in. Well, he knew. <laughs> it's really funny. He knew, right? We had this little window, and there was too much to get in. And normally, what we talked about tonight—that's two hours. That's a two and a half hour show. Um, we Easily. just yeah, we just got to the good stuff, man. We just got to the good stuff. It was a great conversation. All right, Gabriel, I got to know. I got to know, uh, what do you think about this photograph? You know, I mean, I, I'm, I, I am for it. You know, I, 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 a lot of the stuff that Greer's come out with, you know, is really groundbreaking and, you know, I acknowledge, acknowledge, unacknowledged was really good and everything, but I just like, I don't know. It's to me, it's like, what is it going to change? You know, it's, it's an old photo. Like, what is it going to bring to the table now? I mean, it, it's so, yes, sure. We, we all know that, that things in the past like Roswell were most likely real or, or we don't, what do we know? We don't know anything anymore. And that's the problem is we're all too up in the air about it. 
we all have our own individual opinions, but we have no solidified fact that we all stand upon, it seems, anymore. But if he brings another UFO or another autopsy video forward, I mean, that's, it's interesting, but I still, you know, can't see how it's going to change what's going on for us now. So that's kind of where I'm at, you know, so I guess we'll wait and see what it, what it pans out to be, but I'm not, I'm not getting my hopes up again. So yeah, that's a great, great position to be in right there. Don't get your hopes up. Check it out. It's great. Let's go. Let's see. It's good. You know, this is the thing. This photograph is going to get analyzed, scrutinized. It is going to be blown up. Uh, every single object in the video. Forget about the ET, right? Forget about the body. Every yeah. square inch of everything there is going to be scrutinized and, and analyzed. Um, and, and that is it. Uh, debunkers and skeptics and photo analysts are going to be out in force. And you oh, yeah. have to you have to be ready. Yeah. If you are going to do this, he may be listening right now. If you're going to do this, you you know what the repercussions are. You know you got to. It's right. like you got to brace for the you got to brace for the slap, right? <laughs> because it's coming. It's uh, well, and and the only thing I can equate it to is like when I was in Vegas one time and I watched a guy put ten thousand dollars on black and it landed on red. So it's. It's that moment of, of, you know, your oh my God moment where you're like, is this going to be real? Is this going to be found out to be some photoshopped paper that, that, made, that they made to look like an original? You know, I don't know. And that's, you know, that, like you said, that's, that's the position that Greer holds. And that's, that's I, I hope I can say this, that's ballsy. I mean, he's got moxie to go put himself out on that platform. And he's done it many times. And I feel like there's sometimes where he's gotten chastised for not being as correct as he probably should have been. But it's like you say, he's one of those people that should vet everything he goes over and anything he's going to put forward. And if he's not, then he, he's putting himself in a scary position to lose a lot of his, you know, renown that he has right now. So yeah, now okay, so now now let's flip this over because I understand what you're saying. Does this move things forward? It's just a photograph. You know, we know where we're at with things. You know, does this move the ball forward? Are we moving it down the field further? Um, that's a great point. But what if it's the photograph? Right? What if it's the <laughs> photograph? Does that move the ball forward? What if it's the photograph that you look at it and you go, Hold, I'm talking about Gabriel. And you, yeah. Cherie, come here, come here. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And you're just like, oh, crap. I haven't seen it yet. You know, I, I don't know. But what if it's that photograph? Well, and we're, we're actually on the divide on that because she, she, she holds a lot of respect for Dr. Greer and his position. So we're, she told me I could sleep on the couch for saying that I didn't really believe it was going to be real. So wow, we're definitely of two different minds. Yeah, and she don't that's, play. That's how it is here. No, no she, don't, she play. don't play. She don't play. Well, uh, she don't play. No. Um, I, I, uh, I, there's another uh, point that he made tonight, and it seems to me that there are a lot of uh, people and researchers out there that are in agreement with him, and that is those that video, those images. Those weren't leaked, right? That was an intentional move, right? That's it. They were given. And yep. he's not the only one to say this. And that's rough for uh, people to hear and to digest because everybody wants a top secret leaker, right? A whistleblower that's working for the team and he's taking these images yeah. and he's getting it out to the public, man, and he's risking his life yeah. and his career and his family, well, the X Files. Yeah, it's <laughs> it clearly may not be the case, and I know I know yeah. some people don't want to hear that, but I I look at this and I look at this group and the things and how you know I'm not going to go naming names and doing all of that. I've already done it anyway, but 
You look at that and you just have to go, hmm, that's all. It's like, wait a minute yeah. here. Nobody's leaking anything. Right? <laughs> Uh, but do you want to put that spin on it? Everybody gets excited. Um, you know, that we got the, uh, what, what, the smoking man. What was that guy called? The cigarette yeah. dude. Yeah. The smoke, the, the smoke, the cigarette smoking man. Yeah. Yeah. That, that we've got one of those guys out there, you know, looking out for Probably. us. You know, I, I don't think that's the case this time. Plus the, the friggin' video is just dumb. Right, I'll say it's just like it's the Navy <laughs> shooting a video of drones, and I mean, I mean that's cool. Yeah. Uh, just in of itself, if uh, if the Navy is shooting videos of drones, what are they doing it for? Let's talk about that. You don't have to yes, put the flying exactly. pyramid UFO spin on it. What actually is going on here? You know, is it yeah, the Navy? Why are they I think it's the Navy playing games with their own Navy. That's what I think, I, you know, and, yeah. and even further than that, Gabriel, it's probably a case of the Navy didn't alert these ships, right? They're right there, San Clemente Island, man. They're launching these drones, yeah. the Russell's out there, the kids out there, whatever these other, you know, ships, whatever. And they're launching yep. drones, and they didn't tell anybody, and everybody got freaked out, and they did what they were supposed to do. They went out and videotaped, and and they're trying to uh, figure out who's flying drones uh, out there west of San Diego above uh, U.S. Navy warships. Okay, all right, that's a story. Go with that. That's a great story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go with that. Sure. You don't have to say it's flying friggin' pyramids and the Anunnaki. What are you doing? Yeah. It's, it's, good <laughs> Lord, man. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. at least it gives us something to laugh about. You know, there you go. Yes. We, life has got to have some enjoyment in after all. Yep, yep. Hate is going to hate. Oh, hold on. Your wife That's says, right. I won't really make him sleep on the couch. But if it's legit, if it's the photo, Jimmy, then... I get tacos and margaritas. Ah! Tacos and margaritas, okay. <laughs> and she didn't invite me. She didn't invite me. That's a tease. All right. Thank you so much, Gabriel. Behave and be well, my friend, and we'll see you right here tomorrow night. All right. Thank you, Jimmy. Have a good night. Right on. See, Gabriel, um, um, I've spent a lot of time with Gabriel over the years. And lots of great conversations, lots of tacos, lots of steaks, lots of margaritas. And um, the conversations that we have had, I've always looked at Gabriel and said, man, you need to do your own show. You need to write a book. You need to do, you are um, uh, very well grounded. And I like the way that you look at things. And I've always thought that about Gabriel. He's a, just a smart young man. Gabriel. You need to do a show and compete with me. Run that baby 7 to 10 p.m. Pacific time. Just go right up against me, man, because you are that good. And uh, I truly mean it. With that, let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hey, Jimmy, this is Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Hey, man, it's good to talk to you. It's been a, it's been a while since I called in. Uh, I don't know, maybe a few months. But uh, hey, uh, so I didn't get to listen to all of Greer tonight. I did listen to the end of it, though. Um, I do follow the guy; really like him. Um, but my call in tonight is actually about something that I wanted to talk about because I just experienced a UFO sighting last night, uh, and it's still really fresh. Shut up! What happened? Where? No. Where? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm still kind of buzzing from it because I still think about it as I'm like waking up and going throughout my day. Like today, I just been thinking about it, burned in my head. But basically, so. Where, what where, was, Andrew? We need to start with the where. Okay. Yeah, let's let's slow down a bit, right? So, uh, I'm not going to say specifically city-wise, but I live in Washington State. I'll okay. Say that, and I li I work at a I work at a hotel that's near a base. Okay. Uh, a military base. Okay. And and the sighting was over the base, which made me intrigued, of course, obviously. Um. But okay, so yeah, it was in Washington. Uh, basically, I uh, I work for another hotel. Technically, I don't, but they have me go over there occasionally to help them with stuff. 
Um, I, most of the time I don't have a problem with that, but regardless. So as I was doing that, I was walking to that building. I look up to the sky, up to the left, right as I was passing around the corner to the front entrance. And I see this is, I, it's hard to even describe the shape because it wasn't really a, like a shape. It was basically like, if that makes sense. So basically like, let's, if you were to draw this for yourself and see it on paper, it would be basically an X shape, but then you make that same X shape all the way around like, you know, 360 degrees. You, it just basically looks like a bunch of pointy edges coming out at you, but it, it, there's a central point at which, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, so basically this thing was just vibrating up in the sky, right? It was just kind of just up there. I, I stopped, stood there, just looked at it. And I was thinking to myself, should I grab my cell phone right now? Like, should I get my cell phone out and start filming this? I thought, yeah, but let's just wait two more seconds, just for whatever reason, to see if it's nothing. Because what happened was I saw two fiery ball objects from where this thing was projected in the sky fall down. And that's what caught my, uh, caught my eye, because I saw the objects staying up there in the corner, or sorry, in the sky. And then these two objects, these bright balls, probably, probably flares, if you think about it, like because it was over the base, I think that they were probably shooting the flares up at the object to mark what it was mm -hmm. uh, in, my, in my head. But so these things, one by one, there's just two of them that fall to, this, to the ground from this object. This object stays where it's at. It doesn't move, but it's just bright, really, really bright orange light. It's just orange. I don't know why. Um, it's just crazy color orange. Like it, 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 was, it was a very, very vibrant orange. <laughs> but basically... Yeah, so I see that. I, I think to myself, should I grab my phone? Wait two seconds. By the time that that went by, those two seconds went by, this thing had already. Like, I looked. I was. I looked up at it, so I saw it disappear, but it gone. It, I didn't have a chance to get up my phone. But this thing basically did one of these. Uh, I've seen it before too. I've seen the UFO do this exact same thing at UFO Fest when James Gilliland was there. So it was crazy. Um, that's what made me just remind myself of that previous sighting. But essentially, it was up in the sky and then it faded out. Like it. Um, like fade to black, you know, it basically just was like where it's at and then it kind of just shrunk into nothing. Like it like went in a hyperdrive and it disappeared or something like that. Was it uh McCord? Um <laughs> Wow, that's very specific. You uh sounds like you uh did a little bit of research there really quick. Well no, I, I just know my Air Force bases and Army Airfields. And in Washington, hmm. I know uh, over, you know, uh, near uh, SeaTac, they have McCord because I've I've, I've been mm -hmm. there, and then what's over in Eastern Washington? I think that's a uh, Fairfield, Fairchild, Fairlight, Fair. Some that's a bigger Air Force base uh, that's over there, and I've driven mm -hmm. by that, and I know that that's over there. There may be a few other. Air so was it McCord? Oh, it was. I could tell by your reaction. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, I mix my bases up because there's two that I'm mixing up in my head. It might be McCord or it might be this other one that's in somewhat of a general area. On the on the west side of Washington? Yes. Right, okay. Um, what time? Okay, so... That's what I'm trying to pinpoint back today. I have to add, I actually want to do this. I want to write this out so I know exactly what time, everything. Um, I'm thinking it was around, and I can, I can do this because I just have to ask the person who worked at the front desk, like, hey, when was I here this time? Mm -hmm. I think it was around, like, maybe 8 o'clock last night. So was it dark? It was, yeah, it was dark. It was, yeah, it was dark enough to be... Yeah, to where the sun went down. Yeah, but because it was still 8, a little bit lighter. Yeah, yeah. Eight PM West Coast, uh, Washington, the sun is still lighting up in the western sky, right? The sky is still a little bit blue. It's not black yet. Yeah. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, can you tell I've been there? Right. <laughs> so and, <laughs> now uh but I'm asking uh you all of this because andrew i want others that were in the seattle area um around mccord um I, I don't think they call it an air force base for some reason i think mccord is army and so they don't call it yeah. an air force base it's like army airfield or something 
But if somebody was in that general area at 8 o'clock last night, did you see anything? Because I want to hear from you. You can post something in Twitter. You can certainly shoot me an email. Maybe somebody shot video, which is my next question, Andrew. Where was your cell phone? It was in my pocket. That's what I said. Like, I I had had that thought, should I grab my phone? This is one of those moments. And then I just didn't. I waited two seconds. And by the time I just looked at it and just wanted to see what would happen, it it disappeared. So I, I kind of took that as a sign that maybe this was just meant for me to watch uh, and experience myself, potentially. <laughs> but Because right. I, I asked people, too. I, I saw um, right after this happened. I, I turned the corner to the hotel I was going into, and I said to two people I saw outside, uh, did you guys see what I just saw Like at the, up in the sky to the left over there? And they were just like, no, no, what happened? You know, this guy was looking at his phone the whole time. <laughs> so he probably wasn't looking at the sky. But, um, yeah, so no one else saw it but me. No one, there was no one outside. You know, it was very... Uh, yeah. No, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, <laughs> funny, I want to get back to your sighting, but I'll tell you a little funny yeah. story. I'm down in Orange County, this is like three years ago, I'm going to uh, uh, a UFO conference at this hotel, and mm-hmm. I pull up outside, and I see something, I'm getting getting ready to walk in, but I see something in the sky. Um, it turned out to be a missile launch out of Vandenberg, but that doesn't matter. This was at night, mm. it's about nine o'clock at night, frigging huge blue, and, and I see the one stage separate, but it's going across the entire sky and it's not going anywhere. And it's, you know, mm-hmm. it's probably 500 miles long, right? Just going across, boof, you see the, the one stage and then you see this, then you see it turn, it, it, it arches across the sky towards me and then it turns and goes straight up into the stars, right? Cars are pulling over. Wow. People are getting out. I video the entire thing. Video the whole thing. All wow. of it. And I'm mesmerized. But check this out. Andrew, this is the funniest part about the story. I'm watching that go right. down outside. Traffic is stopping. People are getting out of their cars. Everybody's looking at this. as an Inside the hotel is a UFO conference with a few hundred people. None of them saw it. <laughs> <laughs> they were all inside, wow. and I had to go in. Oh my! You won't believe what's going on outside. What? I think it's a missile launch, and we found out later it was. Oh, but the point is, it was right. so cool to see. It was like the movie Tron. You know, this glowing blue thing, just yeah. huge, and you don't see it every day. It's just a fun thing to look at. It wasn't a UFO, but man, you know, you want to have events like this in your life when you can see that nobody at the conference yeah. nobody saw it man no nobody everybody I'm missed worried. it it was all over the news everybody was talking about it later but nobody at the conference wow. saw it and i i got to see it outside as i as i was pulling up it blew my mind okay now back to your sighting i've only got a couple of minutes left <laughs> and and thank you for sharing this with us it's it's incredible how high was it Okay, hmm. let me think about that. Um, it was about as high up from where I could see uh, as a standard airplane would be. Um, no higher than that, I would say. Okay, so it wasn't it wasn't a satellite. It wasn't up in the stars. So it, no. So it's it's down low, twenty thousand feet, uh, ten thousand feet, something like that. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, that's incredible. Okay, could you get a size? Hmm, okay, yeah, my brother was asking me this last night. I was trying to give him an accurate depiction of the size. Um, what I like, what I just said to him was, it's basically like if you were to take, I don't know, ten planes and put them all together into one, like one ball. And then that mass of that, the mass of the sum of those 10 planes would probably be about the size of this thing. Wow. Um, wow. It was pretty large. Yeah, it was pretty big. That's why I was surprised that no one else was looking at it because it was so bright, too. That orange was just like, like I just looked right at it and was like, okay, I have to look at this. You know, like. <laughs> and was it, was it, was it moving or was it stationary? No. That, no, it wasn't moving at all. It, that when I saw the two flares or whatever, I think, I think those are flares anyway. 
Um, they like when I had noticed them there, they were at the top of this object falling down. And then I had just stared at it the entire time. And it, it just remained where it was at in the sky until it dissipated into nothing. So they shot flares up. So then it wasn't that high. I mean, how high do flares go? Not, not that's what I'm, like to me. Like, yeah, to me, it, they didn't look like flares, but that's like what like after talking to my brother, that's what he's, he's probably you know they're probably flares, you know, because it was over the base. But yeah, even when I was looking at it, I thought I don't know. To me, it looked like two different like literally. The first thought I had was this is some kind of craft, and it's in a different dimension that I can't really see fully, and it's dropping two different. Um, objects into our atmosphere that are made to be here for some reason. That's just what I initially thought. Like, oh, these things are falling off of this because, like, it, it was these these things were very bright. They weren't as like if I saw a flare in the distance, you know, they kind of just they kind of fade, fade away, right? Like they kind of shoot up and they kind of sh- and they kind of just like well, you also you know, see pretty quickly, right? And you'll see smoke from the flares too, as well. I mean, uh, mm. that's uh, the now. The other possibility here is that they could have dropped the flares from an aircraft that was above this object, and they dropped the flares down onto it. Hmm, that's possible. Right to light it up, you know, to illuminate it. Um, that's a that's it's a possible, but I would. That's a class A sighting, Andrew. That's a class A sighting. No, it's it class B. <laughs> it's class B. Class A would have been if you shot a frigging video. I know, man. I, you know, it's funny. It's like I didn't intend to call today, but I just thought of it as I was listening to you. I was like, actually, I literally just saw you a phone. I just called Jimmy Church. <laughs> and like, I thought, I thought, you know, I thought at that moment, too, like, oh, he's going to kill me because I did not record this. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, look, I've, I've made the same mistakes. I've, I've seen so many objects uh, now at this point in my life that I just watch them now. Right. You know, I, I don't even, yeah. you know, now if I saw something like what you saw, uh, I, I, I would have videoed that. Um, when I'm out doing sky watches and, we're, and we see a bunch of, I, I don't video any of that. Somebody else could be doing it. But I'm too much into the right. moment and enjoying myself. But uh, but that's incredible. That's incredible. That's incredible. So anybody last night, which would have been 420, um, that was outside right. smoking weed last night on 420, <laughs> up in Seattle, weed capital of the world. If you were outside yeah, last night, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, at around 8 o'clock last night, uh, in the Seattle Tacoma area around McCord Army Airfield, did you see anything in the sky? And uh, let's see if we can uh, uh, get somebody to uh, uh, contact us mm-hmm. and 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 let us know what they saw. Andrew, enjoy yourself, yes, man. Thank you for the phone call, and we'll see you tomorrow night right here on the show. That's right, man. I'll be at work. Listen, have a good night. Thanks again for uh, answering the call, and take care. Yeah, you too, Andrew. And uh, that that's great. That's great. That's great right there. Last night, April 20th, 8 o'clock, SeaTac. Did anybody see anything up in the sky around McCord Army Airfield? I think it's McCord. I don't think it's an Air Force base. Um, with that, I, I do want to thank uh, Dr. Greer uh, for coming in tonight. That was... Uh, that was an incredible conversation. I, I think I'm going to go back and listen to that one again. This is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. What a great night tonight. Tomorrow night is Fader Night. But we've got Richard Bleepin Dolan coming by uh, to hang out with us for a segment or two. So uh, get ready for that tomorrow night. And then open lines after that all night long. Fade to Black's executive producers, Rita Kamurian. Shows produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Kevin. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vito, and Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network, and syndication is KGRA, The Planet. This broadcast is only copyrighted 2021 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tomorrow night's Fader Night with Richard Leap and Dolan, followed by Open Lines all night long. 
Until then, I want everybody to be safe. It's now time to fade to black.